Hello. I was just saying, just that second saying, I feel like I've forgotten something. And that was it. I forgot to start my noise cancelling thing. God damn it. Every single time. See, the reason why I feel like I've forgotten something is because 50% of the time I have forgotten something. So, will he forget the 10K? Hang on. Add points. Oh, shame. <laughs> I'll, I'll just give you all the points now. You would have had the last laugh if somebody had joined called All But Steps. Um, cool. How's everybody this... Uh, what day is it? Thursday. Yes. Check and audience Thursday. Hope everyone's doing well. Um. Sids are a bit high. Okay. My day's been fun. I had to sift through 140 pages of um, HTTP scam reports. Just, oh. Not fun. Not fun. At all. Uh, but still more fun than coding. Well, coding in high level languages anyway. Okay, I'm, I'm going to finish off the uh, the rosé that I started on Saturday. Um, I'm not sure how I didn't manage to... Uh, sorry, I finished on Tuesday. Even the word reports make me cringe. Uh, yeah, you should see these reports. These will make you uh, cringe. They're just pages and pages and pages of uh, kind of cookie lists and head, uh, HTTP headers and having to look through every single line to make sure there's nothing... Uh, at a place or confirm the the, the positive kind of uh, alerts are positives. Uh, so obviously we okay yeah I wanted to ask about that tonight actually. So uh, what is in fact um can we do a quick poll actually? Uh, Andy, you can do a poll for me, right? Can you just uh, do a poll for whether or not um you are making progress in basic 10 and intend to uh yeah if you're if you're making progress just yes or no poll will do um if you're making progress in uh basic 10 and you will be submitting something at the end of the competition but yes uh if you're not submitting anything or you you're you're struggling uh and, and you don't think you'll be able to complete anything uh then 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 vote no um only vote yes, basically, if you if you are gonna if you are doing all right and you're gonna be able to submit something at the end of the thing. Is it maybe I have to loosen up the re the requirements a little bit? Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, so. Okay. Wow. Okay. Should have done the poll in basic ten. Thank you for the poll, by the way. Um, well, I've had one entry. I've already, I've already had one sent to me. So, so it's not, it's not impossible. Uh, it should be at the top. It should be at the top. So tonight we're going to do um, something I haven't done in assembly. At least I don't think I've. I may have done it a long time ago, um, back when I was like fifteen, sixteen, because I was really into kind of the three D graphics algorithms um back back then and i probably would have tried to do something on the c64 um i mean obviously i would have only been able to do vector algorithms but uh oh wow okay so it's 15 to 1 wow um okay uh okay well like i say i've got i've got an entry already and if somebody else that's the only that's two, but um, but yeah, Andy's <laughs> Andy can't win another one. He can't, uh, you know. So um, uh, yeah, interesting. 
Okay, it may be worth it may be worth um, opening up a discussion uh, on on the Discord channel for that. So what I might do then is, um, if if you voted no because you are having trouble, um, if you can please let me know uh, in the Discord channel what trouble you're having with it, uh, and I can either loosen the rules a little bit or kind of guide you uh, along in the right way because it seems like um, CBM Studio uh, is. It is is going to work, but I'm I'm just wondering if it needs, um, if if it needs maybe maybe I'll give it another couple of days and and see see what happens. I'll I'll try and get involved a bit more, I think, and try and try and try and guide people along a little bit. Um, so one thing I wanted to try tonight, which I'm going to do with this, so I'm drinking cider as well. Um, so speaking to to uh, Detlef from uh, Mega Sixty Five, he's uh, German. And I remembered, as he said it, actually, that one of the things the Germans like to do is mix wine and cola and stuff. So I'm actually, I'm not, I've not got cola, but what I'm going to actually do is mix my cider and my wine tonight just to see what that tastes like. Um, but they like to mix red wine and cola, um, which is a, it's a strange cocktail, but it is quite nice. Um it's it's surprisingly nice. It's surprisingly nice. Mixing drinks is dangerous, yeah. Um yeah. And the only time I, I said to Detlef as well, the only time I've had this was in um uh was in uh, uh Disney Disney World, Disneyland, whichever the one in Florida is, uh, at the Epcot Center in the German quarter. Actually Sean Sean will remember. That's where I had had it mixed for the first time, while eating a shit ton of German sausage on from a German German buffet. Yeah, it was really really nice, really nice, surprising. They like um they like to do uh, Fanta as well, Fanta and uh, and red wine as well. Um. Oh, Amok, you crazy crazy man. Thank you very much for the gift subs. Really, really well appreciated. Oh, reminds me actually, all the parcels were collected this morning. Um, so, Amok, I don't know when you're going to get out. I had to fill out customs information as well. Stupid Brexit. Now, now we have custom uh, customs documents to fill out. So I don't know when when yours will will arrive. But Andy and Crazy UK, you probably will receive yours. I would guess tomorrow. I don't know. So uh, uh, I didn't have either of your phone numbers either. So I, I've had to put my phone number in. So I'm going to get loads of notifications to say that DPD is ready to deliver. So um, I'll try. If I if I get a chance to post the times, um, I'll send you DMs in Discord to let you know what time they're coming in and, and the link so you can follow it as well. Um, I don't know how that works with... Um, uh, I don't know how that works with the uh, the DPD or whatever. I forget what it's called in France, but it's DPD that will be delivering to you as well, Amok. I know they've got a different name in France. Um, okay, cool. Right, so we're, tonight we're going to do uh, lasers. So we're going to do uh, line drawing algorithms. So um, you may have already seen... Uh, Oh, thanks. So, yeah, I, I, I've already put my phone number in. It's it's fine. I I will. Um, yeah, but I, I've got it for future. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Start. I'll start signing you up to lots of stuff now. Thanks. <laughs> uh, was Royal Mail a lot more expensive? Yes, yes, much more expensive. Um, yeah. I, the other thing with Royal Mail as well is I have to go out, and I really didn't want to go to the post office. Um, and none of none of the things I did could um, uh, it could could work from um, uh, would fit into a letterbox. So so I just I just got collection as well. DPD are pretty good. DPD I really like them. So, um, but yeah. Anyway, thank you for the gift subs. I'm up uh, gifting to Acnafin, Mythical Duck, Mentat, the Dune, uh, Lofzy six six six, and Carl Hemricks. Royal Mail did collect him not to, do they? Seriously. They don't do it here. Uh, 
No, it's not Kalissim. I, I wish I could remember. It was whoever delivered, because I used DPD with you uh, last time. Um, I can't remember the name of it in in France, but I'm I'll, I'm sure I'll get a, I'm sure I'll get an, an email from them at some point telling me where. Um, anyway, let's let's get on with the stream. So, uh, le DPD, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's all French words are. It's just English words with le in front of them or la if it's a girl. Um, the the whole concept of uh, feminine and uh, masculine uh, nouns really is really don't understand and still don't understand because I come from a country that doesn't have them. So, oh, okay, I didn't realize that. Well, I think it was. I think it wasn't much more than that. Um, I think DPD was like. It might have been about the same actually. Oh, DPD is also DPD. Uh, okay. But yeah, don't don't worry about it. The post is on me anyway. It's all paid for by the stream anyway, so it's it's fine. Um uh, if you really want if you really want to help cheer bits or or gift a sub or whatever, it's it's fine. But um it, I, it, it's I honestly it's absolutely fine, it's covered by the stream, so yeah, that was the one thing I remember about Germany having a male uh, uh masculine, feminine and neutral as well. Um uh, oh god, where's the uh where's the actual main code? Boot? No. Oh no, it's called car, isn't that one? Alright. Okay, so let's show you what we're gonna do now. So we get actually get some code going rather than chat for, for ages. Yeah, let me start the quiz as well. I'll give you all did I give you all ten thousand? I think I did, yeah. I mean obviously steps will say no, but I did, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just gotta gotta make sure because uh quiz listen. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it now. Right, there we go. Uh actually I remember German much more than I remembered uh, French. French just didn't quite sit with me very well. I think it's because I was also learning Spanish at the same time at school. And it it got quite confusing between the two. Whereas German stood out as something a bit but a it's easier to pronounce or at least i found it easy to pronounce uh, and it was unique it was different to to french so okay so i was tossing and turning on what to do tonight um i was going to do uh, some optimization because you can see here the decals on the wall when you're in the top half of the screen up here things go a bit horribly wrong. In fact, some of the particles are remaining as well, so that's a bug we need to fix. Um, it shouldn't be a problem because they'll disappear when you go off screen, but obviously particles that don't move. Uh, yeah, see, there's one there. We need, to, we need to stop that from happening. So there's a few little bugs you need to work out here and there. I don't know why that's crept in all of a sudden, but um, see, it's, it's there as well. As soon as you shoot over them, they disappear. They're just not being cleared properly or something. Um, so yeah, there, there was the the optimization that could be something I do at some point. Um, I was maybe going to do that tonight, but then I thought, no, it'd be nice to get this laser working here. Oh, look at that! That's annoying. Oh, what? Oh, I know what that is. It's because it's hitting the. It's treating it like a bullet that hits the side. So whenever it hits. Yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for the resub, Warlock. Appreciated. Yeah, okay. Well, I know what that is. Um, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to fix it right now. I'm just going to turn the mace off. But I know what that is. So, uh, because basically what the mace is doing is it's treating, it's treating this thing as a bullet. So every time it hits a wall, you can see there it's doing the decal down here. Uh, the problem with that is if the decals happen too quickly on top of each other, um, then they will break like that, uh, which isn't a problem with normal shots because normal shots are just one at a time. But with the with the mace, it's, it's a problem. So we'll turn the mace off. But what we're going to do tonight is we're going to draw a line. It's nice and simple. Uh, we're not going to worry about collision on it yet. Um, but we're going to do um, a line from here down to the bottom of the screen. And what we're going to do is the, the top of the line is going to stay static. 
and at the bottom we're just going to move uh, across the x so we're going to move from about here i think it is to uh i can't remember exactly where it is but it doesn't really matter at the moment we're just going to draw a line from here to somewhere down here and we're going to be able to vary this position at the bottom um shall i know spanish i know a tiny little bit of spanish but uh, I know enough to to read a menu and and order order things and ask for towels and things like that in a hotel, but I couldn't hold a conversation with somebody in Spanish at all. Who's got this tonight, Andy? Um, yeah. So this line is just going to be a single uh, width, a single pixels width. Um, and it's going to flash between red and white. Now, obviously, to do that in characters would be painful. Let me just turn that mace off. It's doing my head in there. Um, because we've already got lots of things going on with the characters. We'd have to draw special characters on the screen in certain places. So my, my thought with this is to do it with sprites. Uh, and sprites give us one major advantage in that they're overlaid over... Um, over the scenery right uh, actually they're 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 not they go behind the scenery and we use masking to to mask certain things but that's that's again that's to our advantage because it means that at the very very least if something breaks with the collision it will be behind the scenery and you won't you won't see where it goes um so what we're going to do is we're going to use uh sprites uh and the idea is we're going to we're going to put a sprite up at the top uh centered on that on the dome at the top and we're just going to start with the pixel right in the middle at the top. And then we're just going to draw a line down. When we reach the edge of the sprite, we put a new sprite on with its center at that position. And we start again and we, we carry on and we carry on. The interesting thing about this is as long as we maintain the sprite, the angle of the, the line so that it starts at the top edge and ends at the bottom edge, we can just repeat that sprite. We only need to draw one sprite and then we can just repeat it and it will move all the way down the screen uh, because the gradient of the line doesn't change. The only time that that breaks down is when the line goes um, beyond the bottom. So it, it finishes on an edge rather than the bottom. And then we'd have to have some different logic for that. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by um, just doing a line in a single sprite. That's what we're going to do now. Um, and then when we've got that right, um, we're going to look at, first of all, how fast it is. Um, and then we'll look at how we can repeat that down the screen. Now, the great thing about this is we don't need this to happen every frame. This can be this can be spread out over two frames. Um, what I'm going to do, and uh, for performance reasons, is have a double buffering system. So we're going to have a number of sprites that go down the screen. So the sprite is 21 pixels high. Uh, so let me just start this up. Um, so we'd need um, nine sprites to go down the full length of the screen, probably less, less actually, because we do have um, the hood bar at the top. Um, but nine is, is definitely going to go from, from the very top of the screen to the very bottom of the screen. Um, so we've, we've got a multiplexer, so that's not a problem. And because they're in a vertical stack, it's really not going to be a problem at all for the multiplexer. You see, it's not, it's not showing those decals now. So we've actually got one, two, three, four, five, maybe. I mean, that might just be one. So let's say one, two, three, four lines that are unused. So we've got 21 lines, and these will be another two. So 19 lines at eight. So that's 80, 162. So actually, yeah, this could be done with eight sprites. But we're just going to draw in one sprite first, and I'm going to show you how we do that. So. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with uh, 3D graphics and, and how things are done, or how things used to be done, I mean, nowadays they're done with, with hardware to do a lot of these things. Uh, I mean, OpenGL and DirectX and stuff uh, has hardware to do these things really quickly. Um, <laughs> you know, it would be really easy to write a Pong game, just turn to the competition or break out, break out or get an old computer and video games and type something in and clearly you wrote, you know. <laughs> that, this is the thing. I, I, I don't want you guys to feel like you have to make the most amazing games in the world. Um, oh, you've done a, done a quick... 
quiz there as well. I'm just here for the quiz. Too many bugs. Don't know basic. Oh, uh, okay. What was the original what was the original poll score, by the way? I missed the missed the actual scores. Uh where's my poll list? Each poll. Oh, wait, that's just one poll. Where's all the polls? So my manager, yeah, I don't see the I don't see the older polls. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, it just says manage my poll, not not manage old polls. So I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't know what the results were. Well, I, I think what we'll do is we'll wait. We'll wait a couple of days uh, because I know that the CC Tour Studio has had well, both the CC Tour Studio has had some updates and um, also the branch. Uh, so update your your um, Hernan P's uh, Vic Four branch on on um, um, uh, on the emulator as well because if you are using the uh, the CC Tour Studio, this will probably. Um, solve a lot of the issues you or, or solve some of the issues you're having on it anyway so um uh, yeah just on that branch i believe okay so way right before kind of accelerated kind of line drawing was a thing uh obviously you know games like elite and and stuff like that had to be done um with with software routines uh and obviously the fastest way to do software routines would be in assembly language and an assembly language is great at doing addition and subtraction and it's great at dividing things by two or multiplying things by two but doing ran just random floating point division is a very very slow process so algorithms needed to be uh, worked on to improve the line drawing algorithm so let's just let's create a new file uh, i'm going to put it in I'm going to put it in sprites because this is going to be a sprite routine. So I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to call it a uh, laser because uh, that's what it's going to be. Uh, yeah. Let's get some, uh, get some windows open as well. Uh, let's just put it over here. I, I find it a lot easier to work on the right hand side than I do on the left. side effect to the size of the bloody monitor get the zero page stuff open here right uh couldn't you also use pre-calculated tails in the case where those calculations are needed uh you could for divisions but the things the thing with line drawing um well as i'll show you now right that, so the typical way you would uh you would draw a line if you were to just do this naively in a high level language um is you have uh you have an x uh and a Y position, which is your start position. And I'm going to put, I'm just going to do a really bad kind of uh, implementation of it uh, in, in ASCII because I constantly do in these streams. So, and then you have a, you have an end position here. Um, and generally what you would do is you would, you would work out, first of all, for every step I go in the X, how far do, down do I go in the Y? And so the way you do this is you, first of all, you need to work out the uh, the difference between the X and Y. So this is kind of the, uh, uh, the, the delta of the X and Y, difference or delta DX. And that would be X2 minus X1. And the difference in the Y would be Y2 minus Y1. Um, now, if you're... If this is the the start point is at zero zero, then this dx and dy just becomes this. So there's one simplification straight away, and that's the approach we're gonna, one of the approaches we're gonna take to make things simpler. Um, once you've got this, what you need to do is you need to say, okay, for every one I go this way, how many down do I need to go? Well, that is your that is your kind of gradient or um, or your um, uh, yeah, it's 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 the gradient of the line, right? So the gradient is. Um, let me get this right. Dy divided by dx. I think that's right. Hang on. Yes. So that means if you um, so if you imagine a line that that goes down one. Say this is just one step down, uh, but ten across. That means for every uh, for every step in the x, then you need to move one tenth of a pixel down, right? 
and here's where the problem is, right? This, this means we've got a division and divisions are slow. But the way this would work is basically you would have, you would have a, if you were to do this naively, the way you could do this is you'd say, okay, I'm going to have uh, what's called an error counter. I'm going to set that to zero and I'm going to start X at zero. And our values here are one, two, three, four. All right, so we've got a DX of uh, four here. The difference between these two lines is four. And we'll, we'll call this 10, right? So, so our DX is 10 and our line is four. That means our gradient is 0 0.4. So now what we do is we start x at zero here and we go from zero to 10 or zero to, yeah, zero, zero to nine, because this is uh, actually, I know it'd be zero to 10 because I've put these values in. Hang on, zero, zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so it'd be zero to 10. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line now. So for, I draw a pixel at this location. And once I've drawn the pixel at this location, I add this to our error number here. Okay. If this number is more than uh, more than one, um, then I do something. If it's less than what, if it's less than one, I just keep repeating until it does become more than one. So I draw another one here. I add 0 0.4. Still not more than one, so I, I add another one, and now I add 0 0.4, and it becomes 1.2. So now it's 1.2. I remove the one from it, and it's just 0.2, and I move down a line. And then I continue. I draw the next one at 0.4. Draw the next one at 0.4. It's now 1.0. So I move down a line. Uh, sorry, no, I don't because it's not more than it. it needs to be more than it. So I draw another one. It becomes 1.4. And then it becomes 0.4. And I move down a line. And so on. And then I draw again. I draw another three. And that would take me to 1.2. Take one off. Move down another line. I've never done nine, uh, so I'd need to do two more. And there you go. And that's my line that moves from, uh, you know, imagine this is this would be over here, basically. And that's my line drawn from these two positions. Now, that's all very well, but there's two problems with this. First of all, we have floating point numbers. Floating point numbers are, are difficult to do uh, efficiently in um in assembly language assembly language is much better at dealing with integers so it'd be great if we could turn this into integers so so one way you could do that is you could multiply everything by large amounts right so you could put numbers like this and then this you know that this becomes 40.0 and your numbers become a little bit easier to manage but that's that's going to break down when you get you know numbers like that where you're still going to have you know, fractional numbers, or you're still going to have, you know, you're still going to hit floating points at some point if the numbers are big enough. So if your line becomes shallow enough, the gradient becomes shallow enough, then you will hit, um, you will hit floating point errors. And it still doesn't get rid of the problem that we need to do a division here. So what some smart so-and-so did was they looked at that algorithm and they figured out how to um, simplify it. And that's what Brezhnev's line algorithm is. So what Brezhnev's line algorithm does, and I need to bring this up because I always forget the way around it goes. Um, it does the same thing, uh, but it does it in a slightly different way. And the way it does it is it, it still calculates the dx and the dy. So I'm going to put these numbers in again, same. So it's not really a curry then? No, no, unfortunately not. I uh, got my coffee and bacon and eggs, so you can continue now. Uh, okay, thank you, Warlock. <laughs> um, uh, hang on, let me bring that. Yeah, okay. So I have to bring this window up because I'm I'm terrible at remembering the uh, the order of the parameters in these things. So, um, so what it does instead, this one is it it keeps um. Duh, duh, duh. <sighs> Where is it? Uh, yeah, okay. So instead of instead of this, we, we have a few more properties that we need to do. So we have um 2dx. I'm gonna call it dx2, uh, which is just double this value, which is 20. 
uh, and 2dy, which is double this value, which is 8. So they're, they're quite easy to, to work out because, uh, because in, um, in assembly language, as I said, multiplying by two, dividing by two is very quick, right? You can do this just with a bit shift. It's, it's like two cycles, very, very quick. Um, and then you've also got your error value, which is calculated a bit differently. And it's instead of starting at zero this time, in fact, I think it does, or no, it won't automatically start at zero. Your error starts off as um, two uh, dy two, sorry, minus dx, which in this case is sixteen minus this, which is uh, 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 minus dx two two sixteen minus four. Okay. So we have minus four is our start. Again, negative number. It's still an integer. We can still do this really quickly, right? Nothing in here is is unusual for an, an assembler uh, to have to deal with. Um, and now what we do is we do the same thing as we did before. We plot our pixel. And this time what we do is we look at we look at this before we do anything else. We look at this and is it more than zero? Well, it's not more than zero. So if it's not more than zero, we need to add a value to it. And the value that we're going to add to it is this dy2 here. So we're going to add that and it becomes four. Okay. And then we plot the next pixel, which is go along here. And then we look at it again. Is this more than, is this more than, um, blah. is this more than zero? It is more than zero. Uh, listen, listen, it's in dy. Oh yeah, sorry. That's why I'm making a mistake because I'm looking at dyx two there. Sorry, yeah. Thank you. It's six. You're right. Right. Uh, wait. Dy two. Yeah, eight. Sorry, I'm getting it wrong. Minus two. Sorry, completely messing that up. All right, let me start again. Okay. Dy two minus dx eight minus dx. Yeah, minus two. Sorry. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Just terrible, terrible maths there in my head. Pete, there are no AMK points. I need to get them in here so people can spot these mistakes and do this. So now what we do, we start again. We plot the pixel. First thing we do. Now we check this value. Is this value more than zero? It's not. So we, do, we don't go down the line, uh, but we do need to add this value to onto, onto it. So we add that on, it becomes six. It's minus two plus eight, six. Then we plot the next pixel. Is this value more than zero? It is more than zero. So now what we do is we go down a line to here. And this time we subtract uh, dx2 from this. Um, so we subtract dx2 from this. Let's get this right. That becomes minus 14. And then we're down here. So we plot a pixel. Uh, is this more than zero? No. So what we do is we add. Uh, dy dy2 to it sorry so it becomes minus six so i'm having to keep checking up there because i know i'm going to get this wrong if i don't look uh, i feel like i've got something wrong here still but okay whatever no no it's fine all right plot a pixel is this more than zero no okay so we're going to add this value to it which is dy2 so this becomes two uh, we plot a pixel. Is this more than zero? Yes. We go on to the next line uh, and subtract two dx from it, so it becomes minus eighteen. And we plot a pixel. So you can see this is this is still drawing a line, but now it's doing it completely with integer maths as well. Um, so oh, I suck at remembering this algorithm. Um, okay, is it more than zero? No. I'm going to add this value to it so it becomes minus 10. Plot pixel, is it more than zero? No, add eight so it becomes minus two. Plot pixel. Uh, and this still feels wrong for some reason. I don't know why this feels. Oh, because I'm adding 20. I should be adding 20. All right, God's sake. Let me start again. DDA method easier and faster. How is it faster though? Because the the DDA method is using division, so uh, so D, DDA is uh, 
is it digital differential or something? I forget what it's called now. Sorry, I got the algorithm wrong. Let me start again. It's certainly not going to be faster in 6502. Definitely not. Uh, okay, so look. Plot the first pixel. Is it more than zero? Let me get this number right first. Hang on. That should be 2DY minus DX. So, yeah, that is correct. Uh, no, so add DY2 to it. So it becomes six. Plot the next pixel. Is it more than zero? It is. So I'm going to subtract uh, DX2 from it. So it becomes uh, minus 14. I swear I'm getting the numbers wrong here somewhere. So it becomes minus six. Uh, there we go. And another thing. It's not zero. It's going to add that value on two. I think this is what I did before. I don't know why it's seemingly like, giving me different results. Uh, okay. And then this time we subtract DX2. So it becomes minus 18. Uh, what? How does I feel Frankenstein in the, the glove thing you've left with me? I have no idea what you mean. Uh, but thank you very much for the bits, Cosmin. No dividing DDA method. I'm pretty sure DDA has a divide. Oh, the gauntlet. <laughs> oh, just go ahead. I don't give a shit about that thing anymore. Let me have a look. Digital differential analyzer, yeah. DDA line algorithm. Uh, yeah, you you need the slope. You need the slope anyway. So, well, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this using this method. Um, trust me, it does does do the line um, properly. I don't know why I'm having problems uh, drawing it out like that, but uh, it will do the line properly. So that's what we're what we're gonna do. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the DDA line algorithm will work properly. Let me have a look. Simple line generation. Uh, yeah, you still need a. I, I don't understand how you would do it without the divide. So, uh, anyway, anyway. Um, I've, I've said I'm going to do the Brezhnev line algorithm. That's what I'm going to use for now. Uh, so we're going to start first of all by um, just creating a system that allows us to plot a pixel in the um, in a sprite at a given location. So we probably will have to use a lookup table to do this efficiently. Um, basically, what we need to do is for every x position and y position, we need to work out uh, what uh, uh, which which bit to turn on in which byte to to turn that on in a sprite. So first of all, let's let's set up an init, in it, which is going to turn on the the laser uh, and a destroy as well. So we've got an init and a destroy. I, I think let's make sure this is consistent. Uh, actually, it doesn't really really matter at this point. Oh god, I've got hiccups. I don't know why that mass was not working out for me, but it was. Uh, I, I definitely know you can do it that way, and I've done it before in in other things, but I've never done it in assembly before. So uh, I'm intrigued about the DDA method, though. I'd like to see. I'd like to see a method uh, using this DDA that doesn't use divide, because from what I remember, DDA is the is is the algorithm that gets. Um, that gets derived where well, that Bresnum is derived from. So uh, to me, it doesn't make any sense that a, an algorithm that uses floating point uh, or, or fixed point doesn't really matter. I guess you can use fixed point as well. Um, <clears throat> and divisions would be quicker than one that doesn't. So, but I don't know. May, I, I might, I might be wrong. Yeah, please, if you could, that'd be great. Um, if you do, if you're going to Discord and drop it into Discord, that'd be good. <clears throat> uh, for now, I'm just going to write this uh, this little setup routine. But 
maybe I'm maybe I'm misunderstanding how the um, how the line draw algorithm the the DDA algorithm draws lines, but I always thought that Berezinum's was a, a deriv derivation of the DDA, not the other way around. Um, okay, so what we're going to do we're going to in screen seven, which I think is the one that has the the laser in it. Yeah, passable area C here. So we're just going to call a function in here. Uh, we'll call it init and exit in here. So in the init here, just going to call it so laser init, and we're just turning on on the laser here. Uh, for now, it's just going to it's just going to enable that sprite um, and not do anything else uh, at this point. We'll work out. We'll work exactly out how to kind of add stuff into that sprite um, eventually. But yeah, let's let's uh, let's do the Bresnum algorithm first. But I I, I will off stream. I'll take a look at the uh, at the uh, um, Skazlin's um, DDA algorithm because I'm sure I'm sure I mean I'm sure there could be faster algorithms for it, but I. I I'm I'm not sure. I think maybe I'm misunderstanding what he means by DDA. So, um, yeah, digital difference analyzer. That's the one I, I know it as, and which is which is the kind of first algorithm I was showing you before. Okay, so uh, let me find. Okay, so X Y color frame. Okay, so uh, we're just going to put this somewhere in the middle. Uh, it doesn't really matter exactly where. Uh, God. So I'm going to do it in red, and we're going to stick it somewhere in the middle. So uh, first of all, let me grab the sprite routine. The, the sprite frame. Don't, don't know how many frames we've got free. Actually, I can check this on uh, a sprite app here. Kind of uh, sprites are loaded in. Oh, where are sprites loaded in? Actually, uh, yeah, where are the sprites loaded? Is it in the main loader? Maybe. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Game sprites loaded at D zero 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 zero. Oh, that's right. They go all the way up to the end. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set a sprite like right up near the end somewhere. Uh, so I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do F zero because that gives me quite a lot of lot of room um, to do sixteen sprites. And let's like say we're gonna I'm gonna double. Um, uh, so it's F C hundred. I'm gonna double buffer the the uh, the the line drawer anyway. So uh, it doesn't need to divide if you use a counter adding the line delta x each row, but you'd still need to use fractional values, right? So you would need. Um, Wait, hang on. He doesn't need to divide if you use a count adding the line delta x each row. A step to the right if the counter is greater than the delta y. If the line is taller than wide and slopes down and right. Okay. Oh, I think I, well, isn't that just Brezhnev? That's the same. That's the same thing, right? That's all Brezhnev is doing as well. I think. I believe. I'm just trying to think now, because yeah, I think it's just another way of looking at Bresnum because you 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 getting rid of the getting rid of the divide by using the 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 dx and dy. Yeah.
So if the dx is so if it's less so it's in those bottom two quadrants, or, or, or ox, whatever they're called. Um, so if it's in that bottom quadrant, that bottom ninety degrees there, then it can work, right? You just need to do something differently if it's on the left half or the right half. Um, and what you're saying is you you take the difference in t yeah okay yeah it is it is the same I think it is it is the same algorithm pretty much. Um, so I think yeah I, I, okay, I think it is a, maybe a simplification of this actually. Because whereas this will work for any line that's in the 90 degrees on this side, and actually any any line that starts here and moves down into this section uh, with you dealing with 90 degrees on each side, I think this is just narrowing the focus down to a 45 degree on each side uh, thing. So, yeah, okay. Okay, so it is, it is a slightly different algorithm. It's, it's a simplified version of what I'm doing now. Um, Okay, well, I'll I'll try that. I, I get I get what you mean. I'll try that because I won't need to I won't need to look at this this thing anymore to do that. So, but first of all, let's let's draw um, some stuff. So first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna put something just up in memory just to. Um, so I'm not gonna see that, am I? Let me let me just add some data into it so I can actually see that that sprite's appeared. Um, is it FC hundred? Uh, okay, I, I get it now. Yeah, I get it. Uh, Xiaomi, uh, which is what I've got here. I, I really have no complaints about it. I mean, it's it's a bit slow. It needs resetting a bit more often than a, than a top-end brand, but I've paid like a quarter of what I paid for uh, my Samsung Note 10 or whatever it was, and it's I, I prefer it. I think it's a much better phone. Uh, the camera's not quite as quite as good. Uh, Xiaomi, yeah, there you go. Aquafin spelled it. Um, it's not. It's you know the camera's not quite as good. It's a bit slower. But if all you're doing on your phone is is browsing uh, emails, or watching a bit of YouTube, then it's perfectly fine. Um, it's not like I play games on my phone. I have a PC for that. Um, it's not like I'm using it as a productivity device. Uh, but uh, yeah okay so i i get that now then uh so um i don't know if he's still around but um i yeah i understand i understand what uh, scarlin was saying there um because it, it is you would have to write a different you'd have to write quite a lot of pieces to it you'd have to write eight different versions of it depending on which direction you're going um, but you could kind of factor some of that out into parameters that switch around and stuff like that. So, yeah, okay. And you you get rid of the need to pre-calculate two dx two dy. You'd get rid of some subtractions as well. So yeah, actually, I, I could see how this would work. Okay. Well, well, let's let's go with that method anyway. Uh, it'll probably make more sense as we're going through it. All right. Let's uh let's see if that's actually load up with a little sprite in the place we can see us we'll just see a tiny little line in the sprite hopefully uh okay we need to import this file so we're almost an hour in and i've not done any proper code yet <laughs> just discussed line algorithms and i've not actually done anything yet so here's our loader so it needs to go in, into this lot here somewhere um I'm going to load it in with the sprite stuff here. I know I've got these debugs on every line. I will get rid of these at some point and make them neater. But it's good just to, for now, when I'm looking at how much memory things are taking. Four cases left and right, plus shallow and acute. You can swap. So, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's what I'm saying about parameterizing. So you can, you can make it so that if, you know, X one, uh, sorry, Y Y one is more than Y zero, or Y Y Y one and Y two. Then you just switch them up, switch them around. So, um, but yeah, I I get it now, because I do I do get it. So apologies for not getting it straight away. It's because DDA the DDA 
the standard DDA algorithm, which is the one that you kind of get taught when you're doing high level uh, languages, um, has a divide in it. And they teach you that Breslin is better because it doesn't have a divide in it. But um, but that makes total sense actually. That if you if you if you just use kind of delta offsets and just add them like that, then then yeah, then it will it will do the same thing. And it is a it is a it's a narrower case of what the Breslin line algorithm is doing. So the Breslin line algorithm is doing a ninety degree segment and dealing with a whole ninety degree segment in one in one kind of loop. Um, whereas what you're doing is you're splitting that into two different cases, one for if it's shallow, one for if it's acute. Um, so you're only dealing with 45 degrees, but you're simplifying the algorithm. So you're, you're, you're sacrificing a little bit of memory for, for a bit more speed, um, which is certainly what I want to try and achieve. So cool. Let's go with that. I like having side win this. It's nice. I need to get some coke for it though. I'm going to do it with coke. It's basically divide, but you, yeah, I, I, I kind of get the point now. Okay. First of all, let's, let's make a plot plot function here. So what we need to do. Okay. So for now we're going to consider that the sprite that we're drawing into has already been uh, set up in a zero page location, because that's going to be the easiest way to do this. So I'm going to create, um, hang on, let me have a look at the zero page usage of this. Oops, can't see for the wine bowl. <laughs> Oh yeah, loads of room. All right, so just gonna put something in the uh, reusable area of zero page. So I'm gonna do it. Uh, just do it here somewhere. Well, actually, I'm just gonna call it uh, sprite ref because this is just gonna point to, and we can use this in other things that, that draw to sprites. Because as long as we're we're not doing this in an IRQ, then we can we can guarantee that this will be free to use. So. The French must be in tears. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, French people. I just wanted to try it, and it's really quite nice. So, uh, it's Mega Rose A plus uh, Copperberg. So yeah, that's courtesy of the Mega sixty five team. Love it. I kind of don't want. I kind of don't want to throw these bottles out. I might keep at least one. I might just put one on my shelf up there somewhere. I'm keeping all fours may be unnecessary, but I might. I might do what most kind of girls do. Fancy, fancy girls who like to be fancy. And they fill it with sand and pebbles and things. And oh, prize fodder! Yeah, that's not a bad idea. What empty, <laughs> empty glass bottles? <laughs> Put some raspberry pies in them, yeah. Probably fit a pie, pie, uh, pico in there as well. Uh, maybe not, maybe not quite wide enough. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll keep hold of them. I'll keep hold of them for now, anyway. All right, so we're going to sprite ref, we're going to set that up here. Um, I mean, it's just temporarily, it's probably not going to be set up here, but uh. Uh, with the full algorithm in place, it probably won't be set here. It'll probably be set as part of whatever loop we've got going on down here. But we're going to set it here just so we've got, um, you know, we've we've got the uh, the reference ready just for our test. Okay, now I wanted to see, did it actually put that sprite on screen? Hopefully we see a sprite on here. Okay, is this Doctor Who? Yeah. So there you go. We see a sprite with a with a line in it here. Okay, cool. So that means the sprite's in the right place. I'm going to leave the line in for now. Um, I'll probably remove it um, at some point. Sorry, I don't like capital letters in my in my uh, hexadecimal. I don't know why. Personal thing. 
don't like my hex to shout at me. I like my I like my uh, namespaces to shout at me. Okay, so to plot a line in here, first of all, we need to work out um, how far down we need to go based on the y. So for every for every y, um, we need to move three bytes down. So the easiest way to do this is transfer y to the accumulator. Uh, and we store that at, uh, I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to call it offset. And then we're going to, we're going to double it. And then we're going to add the offset again. Now I've times it by three. Um, the other way, I mean, we still need to store it in the offset. So yeah, that's fine. Whoop. All right, hang on. Is there an easy way of doing times three here? This seems like too many cycles for times three. Uh, no, that's probably. All right, hang on. We can do. That doesn't really matter. I think that's fine. Times three. Just thinking of it as an easier way. I think that's about right, though. Shift it to the left, doubles it. Add it to the value that's already an offset. I thought, yeah, no, that's fine. All right. So this offset is going to be down here. You'll see why in a minute I'm doing it like this. I've started doing this a lot. And actually, since I've started using this label, I feel it's actually made me more confident about using uh, zero page and I was already probably overconfident about using it anyway, uh, not zero page, uh, self mod code. Um, but now I kind of see it as a real sneaky way of, of doing this. And it makes me feel more confident about it. As I say, I was already overconfident, but now I'm, now I'm ridiculously confident about it. Okay, so that gives us our, our Y position down. So if our value is Y zero, then we will be at byte zero, which is going to be the, the, the byte in the top left of the sprite. If we 10 uh, Ys down, then our sprite is going to be, uh, our offset into the sprite is going to be 30, which is going to be 10 rows down and on the left-hand side, that's byte 30. So that's nice and easy. And then what we need to do is we need to transfer X to the accumulator. So X is our, our value across. Now X is a little bit different because with X, what you get is um, for every eight that you move across, you need to move one. So we need to divide by eight. So this is pretty easy. We can do this. That divides by eight. Now this could be this could probably be changed into a lookup table um, instead of doing it this way. Uh, but this isn't this isn't that slow. This is going to be done relatively quickly. I mean, you're looking at two cycles, uh, four, two, two. So that's ten. Uh, another four, ten, so twenty, twenty-six cycles here to calculate the offset. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. This is for one pixel. Okay, would there be a quick way of doing this with tables? So, with a table, we could. Well, no, because this also needs to be like that. So there is a bit more in it. Okay, so let's think about this in, in terms of tables instead. Because if this is faster with tables, we're definitely going to do it with tables. Well, yes, it is going to be faster. Because if you look at... Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. With, we'll do it with tables. It's going to be faster. Okay, so uh, y offset. God, really need to get the uh, the blue switch for that caps lock button. So I hear it being pressed. Uh, so this, uh, in fact, I don't even need to. I can use a directive for this. So we're going to fill twenty one lines with i times three. So we're wasting a few bytes here to do this, but it should be a bit quicker. Uh, and the same with X offset, but this time we do 24 and I divided by eight. So now we can load the accumulator with Y offset comma Y. 
it's going to give us this value. Then we can add x offset. Proper x, which is going to add this value on here. And then we'll transfer that to the Y register. It saves us doing the self mod there. So now in the Y register, we have the exact byte that we need to work on. Uh, and then all we need is a, a table offset as well. So what we're going to do when I say table offset, this is because we need to then use, uh, where is it? We need to use this powers of two thing here. Speed versus memory taken. Yeah, cool. That's that's um I think the next challenge is probably gonna be a speed challenge. So um I'm gonna move just back off a little bit from the Mega 65, give them give them a month to recover from us bombarding with them with uh, questions about basic. Uh, and we're gonna do a, a speed code challenge. So the challenge is going to be um to to write something that fits within a certain number of bytes so there will be a byte limit so you don't just unroll all the loops um but to to make it run as fast as possible so because the last thing i want to do is get somebody to just unroll like a shitload of loops but we'll we'll i'll, I'll think of a speed challenge and we'll do that so take speed and see what code you come up with <laughs> Oh, it reminds me of that uh, famous video of the spiders that were giving loads of different drugs. That's a very famous video. I'm sure somebody can link that. If somebody finds that video, can they link it? It'd be really, really good. Uh, okay. Oh god! Right, uh, blah, 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 blah. right. So we've got our offset here. So all we need to do now is we need to take our x, we need to trim it down to just the the last four bits, um, and then use this to look up these powers of two here. So we've, we we know we now can look up a power of two in this table, and that gives us everything we need. So to plot a plot a yeah, plot a value, all we need to do now is. Take this value, or it with oh, this is not quite right because it needs to be reverse because we need to not because the the left hand side is uh one to eight, not one, so ah, oh, there we go, somebody's found the video awesome. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I'm not going to play it actually because I want to get this this algorithm done. But um, yeah, please, if you if you kind of struggling to follow and you just want five minutes of laughter, just go and have a look at that uh, that video. If you've not seen spiders on drugs, then you will enjoy that. I think it's kind of it, it has to be. I mean, I mean, I know the commentaries are piss take, but I wonder, I wonder whether or not the actual spiders webs are real, like spiders on those drugs, or if it is just. Uh, a piss take like 100 percent a piss take uh, it has to be it has to be surely and that's it we've now plotted a pixel in that sprite okay so let's let's try that out now so um so we put a we put a pixel we put a line across the top um but let's let's try and draw a dot in the bottom corner so we're going to load x with uh 23 and um, we're going to load y with 21 uh, sorry 20 i'm going to jump to sort of team plot and that should hopefully put a dot in the bottom corner of our uh, of our sprite i think the beauty with this with this uh, thing is we only have to draw one sprite i think this is one of the nice things about using sprites for this because if we were doing this with with bitmap, if we were doing this with characters, we would have to draw all the way down. I mean, with characters, you could maybe do a bit of repetition with it, um, but it would be a bit hard because you'd only have a small area to do it in. 
but with sprites you've got kind of 24 wide in fact you could even do it on on one yeah so well 12 wide but you could even do it on one side of the sprite or the other depending on which direction it was going um and then once you've drawn it as long as it stays from top to bottom and not from top to one of the sides then it's just a matter of just stacking the sprites and shifting them so you draw one and re reuse the sprite pointer um okay we've got a bug here somewhere First power two, that's because I need to put tables in here. Also, anybody who's already won um one of these nexus ddr I, I haven't got the boxes anymore because I've, I've sent them so oh i've got the i've got the nexus 4 one so i've got this one so anybody who wants to win one of these it'll be the a7 though not the four um uh that's what the basic competition's for anybody who's already won one of these so that's andy crazy uh monsters go boom if you've got any ideas for um a speed code competition let me know because um now you guys can't win um, it it wouldn't be too bad for you to uh, give me a, any uh, ideas that you might have. Okay, so yeah, we're plotting a pixel here, perfectly fine, cool. So now we can move on to the next section, which is uh, draw a line. So we'll keep these tables here along with the plot, uh, and we'll add a routine here called draw line. Okay, so this is going to be uh, a little bit different in that we're we're going to treat uh, zero zero. Actually, we're treating zero zero as the top left at the moment. We should probably change that. Um, so let, let's change that a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it use um, negative numbers as well. So zero will be in the middle. So what I want this to do now. Oh, sorry, itchy ear. What I want this to do now is I want this to draw um, pixel one pixel on the left, one pixel on the right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the value in X here. Let's see that bit. Does this bit matter? Yes, it does. Okay. I'm going to add uh 10 to it no 12 to it sorry so that makes that f4 that's that there you go 12 or 11 it doesn't really matter and what this is doing is is just shifting the uh the pixel across um so we can have negative value we can start with negative values here it's a clear carry bit in there and obviously we need to clear carry bit again here because there's no guarantee that that was going to clear it anyway Okay. Why is it not loading? And the reason I'm I'm doing this is so that I don't have to go. So the the line is always going to start at zero zero. It's never going to start anywhere other than zero zero. You can see there's a line. In the, there's one in the middle. There's one on this side now. And if I want to put one on the on the far side. I just need to change this to uh, 11, not 12. So it's 21 across. So in theory, this should now draw three dots at the bottom. Um, and what that means is when I draw the line, the top will always be zero, zero, which means I don't need to supply the, um, the zero, zero point. All I need to supply is the end point. Uh, if I can supply the end point, then everything else works out. DX just becomes whatever I've passed in. DY just becomes whatever I've passed in. Uh, and the whole algorithm gets even simpler. There we go. Cool. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of this line that we draw in here. And I'm going to get rid of the plots as well. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to try and draw a line to this this position. So we're going to try and draw a line to that bottom position. So we'll start with just going, uh, uh, these are going to be uh, whatever you deem a shadow or a cute to be here, but we're, we're going to, we're just going to do lines that go 
uh, positive in the in the x direction first and then we'll deal with how doing it in the other direction um, in a minute so draw line is basically going to take these two values and these are going to become our dx and dy now i'm going to put the variables here for now uh, but i am going to move these into a zero page eventually so i'm going to call them line dx so i'm just going to call them dx and dy here i might rename them when i move them um, so this is just going to be a byte this is just going to be a byte as well uh, and then this is our error counter I don't know why it's called an error counter, but that's always the term I've, I've used for that. I think that's the one that they use on, uh, so I was looking at it on, yeah, it's the same on, uh, actually, no, it's not. On Wikipedia, it's called D. Oh, it's called error in the normal algorithm. All right, I don't know why it's called D here. Uh, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna call it error here anyway. <laughs> It's worth noting as well, this can be used to draw circles as well. There is a technique that uses a similar method for drawing circles as well by simplifying the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Uh, x squared, yeah, x, x squared plus y squared equals r, r, r squared, which is the circle equation. So the, um, the x and the y squared equals the radius squared, which is Pythagoras, really. You imagine a radius moving around, it's just drawing, Pyth it's just drawing right angle triangles against the various axes uh, but you can derive you can derive an, uh, a division free algorithm from that as well uh, don't ask me how to do it i don't know but if you look you can find it on wikipedia quite easily uh, okay um rock medley oh yes that's cool that rock medley that was that was one of the best uh tunes i've heard in a long time it's very good okay um okay so to draw the line what do we need to do okay we need uh, an x position and we need a y position uh, so first of all i'm going to store x and dx and i'm going to store y in dy and then i'm going to load x is zero and load y just do that. Oh no, I can't, damn it. Damn it. Load y is zero. Okay. So we set up our line now. We have our we have our delta x and we have our delta y here. So we're going to start by by plotting uh, a pixel at x and y. So we just so we we'll see plot. Um yep. Again, we could probably speed this up slightly by by making this in line instead, but we'd have to we'd have to copy it each time. So uh, that would be a good stream attack patterns. How to use mass plot them by Do you know? I was thinking about um, uh, uh, the the dissect streams that I used to do on Thursdays. When I finished one of the games. Um, well, actually, when I finish both of them, I think. So when I finish the Saturday game and when I finish the Tuesday game, the, the Game Boy game, I'm going to switch over to doing um, Mega 65 full-time. But what I may do is turn the, the weekday one into a dissect uh, stream where we talk about uh, techniques, uh, much in the same way we did with the C64, but we, we talk about programming techniques on the Mega 65 and maybe go over some stuff I've done um on Perseus through through the week that, that I didn't do on stream, you know, like and it could be things like attack patterns and stuff. Um but but like to do things like um talk about how DMA works, talk about how the raster rewrite buffer works in the particular way that I've got it set up, uh how mod players work and things like that. And it could be kind of interesting. How to draw a racetrack which curves and goes over hills. Draw a racetrack which curves and goes over hills. You mean like a uh, outrun style game? Okay. Uh, okay. So we've got our dx and we've got our dy, and we've drawn the first. Uh, we've drawn the first. 
actually that that could work in um raster rewrite buffer as well definitely definitely could work um power drift could anyway but, right we've drawn our first pixel so now we need to work out do we go down the screen and i think that what we were saying is you need to check you need to take the the value in error which we'll just keep in the uh can i keep it in the accumulator no because because we use the accumulator in here okay so we take the value in here and we add the value from dx and then we compare that to dy and if it's less than dy we don't do anything we just jump to here at which point we increase x and then jump to here so actually if i did this here so the reason i'm setting that there is because i'm going to start with the increase x to to save doing this at the end this is a another trick you could do with the uh, spiral actually to save save a byte but here it's going to save as a cycle as well so which side of the chicken has the most feather <laughs> Channel routine for that. I have the routine for um for a track moving left and right, but that was really I was testing out um a two two line um two line FLI or whatever it's called two FLI. Uh, so the way to kind of change loads of stuff, loads of uh, character parameters and stuff on every other line. Um, One is really heavy, the other is a little like, oh, God's sake. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a joke I've not heard before. Well, actually, neither of those I've heard before. They're not They're not the worst, but whatever. Uh, racing tutorial. Yeah, there's some really good, uh, there's some really good articles on how to do the, um, uh, to do the fake kind of rolling road uh, thing. Uh, it's actually something the Mega 65 would be absolutely incredible at, and i hope somebody does that and the more and more i use the machine the more and more i realize there's some really amazing stuff that can be done with it and i just wish i had time to try it the more um but you know i i'm i'm pleased with the the game that so um the the game idea we've got is pretty awesome so i'm i'm kind of happy with that and it will be will be really good and if we can get more of you guys involved then even better Okay, so uh, we also actually need to check here: have we reached the end? Um, so maybe I maybe I'm not going to put that there. Maybe I will keep it at the bottom here. So that needs to be compared to that. Like that. There we go. <laughs> Uh, okay so then if this value in the accumulator is um we need to store that value in here as well if that value is more than dy then what we need to do is we need to subtract dy from that value and increase y so at this point we're going to increase y the carry is not clear, so we don't need to set the carry bit here. Um, but what we need to do is subtract dy. And then that gets stored in the error again here. Okay, that should be kind of right, I think. So let's give that a try. I'm talking about 65 in basic, cos and sine function to return the correct value. um okay well the easy way the easy way to resolve that if you're having problems with that for now um if you know that one of them is correct i will check it on my check it on my machine but if you know one of them is correct say sign is correct all you have to do is add um uh 90 degrees so you need to just add 90 degrees to sign so sign x plus 90 degrees or beam radians so that's a way to get around it in the meantime 
so so cosine x is the same as sine x plus 90 degrees uh Uh, I forgot what I'm doing now. Oh, yeah, I'm looking for this line. Oh, okay, so it's gone horribly wrong here. So let's have a look what I've done wrong here. Uh, so I take the value in here. I add our difference, and I compare it to this value. So let's have a look what our values are. So our values are uh, 11 and uh, 20. So let's just put these values in here, right? So this is our 11. Oops. So let's see what's going on here. No, errors at zero okay so we go and plot on and our x and y is at zero zero right just trying to work out exactly what's going on here so um oh. okay so we take our value that's in error which is zero so let's just get all these numbers right and we add dx to it so our dx is 11 so that becomes 11 we compare it to dy which is not it's less than dy, so we jump to here and we store that value in error. Okay, here, which we're doing there. Then we increase x. We compare that to this value here. It's not the same, so go back to loop. Wait, I should be doing y and I should be switching these around actually. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, sorry. I should be doing for every step in the dy. Uh, oh shit, I've done this the wrong way around. I'm going to hang on. So. Oh no, that's right. Hang on. It's these that are the wrong way around. Okay, it should be like that. I think that's right. Let's try that. This is that medley. I like this medley. I don't realize until it's been on for ages, though. That's the problem. <clears throat> so we think about that. So for every step, take down the screen, you know, one down the screen at a time. I add the delta x on when delta x exceeds the delta y then i increase the x yeah okay <clears throat> still drawing a mess though why is it drawing a mess okay let's have a look at the routine so so plot pixel zero zero Okay, it doesn't matter. Let's just work it out. Plot pixel at zero, zero. Take the value that's in error, uh, which I'm not resetting. I should be resetting that here, really, but let's do that here. There we go. Um, and add the value here. So the value here is 11. So the accumulator is now 11, which is less than 20. So I go to here and store it. Now I increase Y. So I go down the screen one. Yep. And I compare that to, oh, that should be compared to the Y as well. Hang on. Okay. It's not equal going to here. So now I've increased Y. So I've gone down one, zero, one. Take the value in error, add DX to it. DX is 11, so it becomes 22. It's, this time it's not more than uh, DY because DY is 20. Uh, not equal to or more than dy, sorry. Um, so I come to here where I increase x. And I subtract dy from it. So it becomes 2. Hang on, I'm just... Oh, yes, that's right. That's what's going on, isn't it? Yep, thank you. Stupid, stupid, stupid me. All right. Hang on, can I do this with?
Oh, no, I, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for that. It's really obvious when you think about it, isn't it? I'm just being stupid. <clears throat> Need a hash, listen. Where? What are you on about? Uh no. I don't need a hash, don't think so. Hang on. No, I don't. I'm just trying to work out how to do this most efficiently now. Um Do it this way. Yeah, and they'd probably be a bit quicker if I use zero page. In the self mode, wouldn't it be better to use direct there? What do you mean? So I don't need that there anymore. Just need to make that load. Why? I don't know what you mean. That's what I'm doing here. I, I'm getting confused. You're confusing me. Stop confusing me. My poor little head. Poor little head can't handle it. Hey, there you go. We've got a line there. Um, I am using self mod. Self mod here. Uh, <laughs> oh, you mean down here instead, maybe? Do I have to do... The only comparison I need to do is here. Well, let's, let's see how let's see how slow this routine is. So I'm going to do. So as I say, once we've got one line, it's it's pretty easy. Um, it's pretty easy to extend this um, by just duplicating that sprite down the screen. Uh, because as long as we line the the zero up with the uh, the end of the last one, it will be almost correct. I mean, it might, we might need a little bit of adjustment because of the gradient of the line won't be exactly right. Uh, but it, for something that's going to be moving the way it is, it's probably going to be absolutely fine because it's moving. It's also flashing red and white as well. Uh, so we'll check that in a minute. See how that looks. It could be that simple that we just we just duplicate it down the screen like that. Um, Because it might not be, it might be easy to just draw it through uh, many sprites. Depends how how slow this algorithm is, which we'll see in a minute. Um, hang on, is the border changing? Oh, because we're only doing it once. Okay, so as soon as we're initializing it here, what I'm going to do is call it update here.
Okay, cool. So we're going to call this routine on the screen update now, which is this one here. Yeah, so that that algorithm is pretty cool. I like that. I like that. And it is it is like a narrowed version of the Bresden line algorithm, which is why I was getting confused. It's it's kind of a almost a hybrid between the two routines. I will have a go at um, optimizing it further as well, shortly. Okay, there we go. Okay, that I mean that looks like quite a lot. Let me turn the display debugging on to where's my borders display. Oh, it's there. Display. Oh, there, there we go. Debug. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's slow. Okay, that's quite a lot, right? So let's see if we can reduce that. So we can obviously make this quicker just by duplicating this line down the screen. And you can see if I put this line on here, this is the steepest it's going to be. It's it's still gonna. It's still going to come all the way over here and all the way over here. So it's still a decent line uh, in terms of what we want. Um, but yeah, let's see if we can optimize that because that is a little bit too slow for my liking there. Okay. So first thing we can do is we can make this routine um, not reset this value here. So we instead of um, instead of trimming that, uh, I should have kept that one. Oh yeah, let's keep that one. No, let's take a screenshot of this as a as a comparison, just of this bottom area here. So I'm going to keep that available at the right size as well. I mean, it's a terrible way of doing comparisons, but uh, it's going to be the quickest way for me to do it rather than do the proper counts and stuff. So you can see that's roughly. Hopefully right. Okay, so that's what we're aiming to be. Hey, monsters. How you doing? Okay, that's definitely a little bit quicker. So what we've done here is we just shifted it over to the left-hand side of the sprite. So what we'll do is if it's moving from left to right, um the, the line move left right will use this particular um algorithm here well actually uh, this this particular algorithm here uh, if it's moving the other way then we'll change this algorithm to be a slightly different offset so it's going the other way um, and what will happen is it will just be a, a mirrored version basically so um the way it will work is it'll just be another offset going the other way um and and the yeah so there'll be a like plot left to right and plot so let's do that here let's do plot left right you see quest for tires what was that was that a c64 what um what platform was that i miss it it's so quick now i miss it completely it was c64 okay shocker eh right so can we make this any quicker um we could probably make it quicker by moving these into zero page. I don't think that's going to be a great idea because I don't think we've got room for it. Um, but if we could just move one of them into zero page, that might help, right? So so the, story, the reason I'm looking at this one first because this is what happens. Um, every pixel that gets plotted uses this routine, right? So... We can make this quicker by by moving things out of here um well firstly firstly what we can do is we can move this from here uh, to here right and we'll call this draw line left to right um, So 
So that gets rid of the jump to subroutine. I'm going to leave this routine here because it's good reference. Um, but we're going to move that there for now. Right. Uh, having a look at zero page. I can find zero page in here. Still got quite a lot of room down here in the temporary Z page storage area. Um, we could steal a bit of that for our Y offset tables, maybe. We'll come back to that one, maybe not. Um, this value goes into the Y, which becomes here. This X value goes into the accumulator, gets and with seven, and then used to look up a value in the table. See, this bit is the bit that feels slow. Uh, good night, John. Yeah, I, I'm going to finish a bang on a half 12 tonight as well. Got very early this morning. The uh, the collect the DPD collection guy came super early. Um. Okay, so then this there's this loop bit as well. So this is also happening on every pixel. So how can we simplify that? Well, one of the ways we can simplify that is by moving these into zero page. So um, I'm going to change these to line DX and line DY and line error uh, because then that makes more sense in the context of looking through zero page values. And you see there's a few cycles to be saved by doing that through throughout here. Um, let's get rid of I just don't need them anymore I mean the inconsistency in the case in here is terrible but uh, whatever oh damn it see how much that's saved if we can shave this down to like half i'll be happy with it we're not going to draw across every sprite i think we'll stick to the original idea of reusing sprites down the screen it makes the most sense we've got the multiplexer to do it um it makes no sense to uh to calculate this on um multiple sprites when it, pretty much every sprite is going to look the same okay that's definitely less let's bring up the original image yeah i mean it's Maybe twenty five percent less than it was. Let's see if we can get it down even more though. It'd be good to get it get it further. It's, it's really bad that I'm using an image like that to do comparisons, but it, it's working, so it's fine. You can see all the crazy methods that I use. So I was having a problem with my keyboard um, that my E key was um, repeating itself. So sometimes I'd press it and it pressed twice. Uh, and it turns out the reason why it was doing it was it's just a tiny little bit of grit or dirt in it or something. Um, and it was just causing it to act actuate twice. Um, hey, Nickbus, uh, nice feature you can now follow keys being pressed. Um, oh, yeah, although the quiz is over the top of it, so you do kind of miss the arrows on that side. But to be honest, it's only really the arrows. I don't have a numpad, so you'll never see the numpad pressed anyway. So. Um, Pressed air, yeah. I well, I just I just took the keycap off and just gave it a blow, and it was it was fine. I knew there was something wrong with it because every time I every time I typed the, it was typing the, and I thought I've, I've either got a Shakespeare filter on, um, or or my E key sticking. So turned out it was just a sticking key. <coughs> oh. Uh, okay, so there, I guess the other area of contention is this X and Y that's being self-modded back to these values here. Um, this is happening again once for every pixel. So if we can avoid doing that, that would be great. Problem is, is we kind of need those values here. So I'm not sure how we're going to go about doing that. But the question is, is do we need... Yes, we do need X and Y here as well. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be an easy way around that. Um, I 
Okay, what about branches that are taken? So a branch that is taken will use three cycles. A branch that isn't taken will use two cycles. So you want to balance your branches so that it always that the side that's taken the least um, is is the uh, is the three cycle one rather rather than the one that isn't taken. So yeah, so you you want you want the the branches to be taken less often than they aren't basically. Um, so is that the case here? Uh, no, it's not. In fact, so in this case, we're we're going the other way around. So we're doing a we're doing a, a different check here instead. Um, however, I think moving this would cause us to add more cycles than we would save, uh, because what we're saying is we need to. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think that's going to save us any either. Uh, what about this comparison here? Uh, okay, well, this branch is almost always going to be taken anyway, right? Uh, because this is our loop, loop one, and we don't have, we don't have like a, yeah, we don't, God, I tell you what, I, I really, really, really could use use the Z register right now. I would save a lot of stuff down here. Uh, okay, never mind. What's the theory behind using one sprite to draw a line from one corner of the screen to the other pro and uses one sprite all the way down the screen in demos? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do here. So uh, if you imagine this sprite that I've, I've just drawn a line in, right, uh, which unfortunately I don't think I can get much quicker than this, but if you want to draw a line, right, a line is, um, uh, it, it has the same gradient wherever you are on the line. So no matter where you are on that line, um, the the pattern of pixels Root stays roughly the same, right? Um, it's not quite. It's not quite. You know, there is there is some very variation. Like if you just was to stack, uh, if you stack forty five degree line, then it's going to be one 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 one. It's a perfect line of pixels. But if you if you're doing something that doesn't divide easily into a sprite, then um, you may get some slight offsets, but they'd be very very minor and hard to spot. But the idea is, is you you take this the sprite that you've drawn. So in this case, it's uh, I mean it's in the wrong place, but let's take a look at it. So you take this line that we've drawn in this sprite here, and we put it up here, right? So this sprite is now here and finishes here. Then you take the next sprite and you put it at this position here. Uh, so this this line here becomes here, and this line will just continue on all the way down the screen and just multiplex them down the screen. Yeah, if you multiplex is set up, it's a, it's a really simple multiplex because all you're doing is one single sprite just repeating. Um, and that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to repeat it down the screen. Now, for now, um, it's going to go behind things, um, but we will have to make it stop when it hits things at some point, which complicates things a little bit, but um, not too much. Um, also, what it means is as well is we, we can just think about the, the line in terms of this section here. Um, so we, we just draw from here to here and let the algorithm deal with, with duplicating it down the screen. So we're not actually telling it where to finish down here we're telling it where to finish here so we just say draw from here to here but extend it draw from here to here but extend it draw from here to here but extend it and that's it that's all we're going to do so we've got our draw line left and right uh we'll we'll just use that one for now and we'll we'll make this extend so <clears throat> what we need to do here is we need to uh First of all, let's position the, the sprite correctly. So let's get this one in, in position over here. So I'm going to guess that's, uh, I could do with a little marker to grab where it is, but let's let's just do some guesswork. Okay, so I'm going to say that is F0 and 5, 0. That's what I'm going to say. the beauty of doing this as i say with sprites is you can um it's completely separate from anything else you're doing on the screen right so you can you, you can composite into the screen without having to clear anything underneath it or, or whatever you will have to clear the sprite eventually once per frame uh, but what i'm going to do i'm going to use a double buffer approach where on one frame it's this uh pointer then it's going to be drawn it's anywhere in the screen it doesn't really matter where it happens but then at the very beginning of the next frame the, the 
the, the pointers are all changed. It means we can take as long as we want to draw it. So we could technically just draw all the way down the screen if we wanted. But oh, that wasn't a bad guess, was it? That wasn't a bad guess at all. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to move this down uh, four pixels. <laughs> I'm really impressed with how. Wow. Okay. Got the eyes for it. I do need to get some switches for my keyboard. I want to get a blue switch uh, for the caps lock uh, and probably for the escape button as well. Definitely the caps lock, though. Um, I do like the feel of the switches. They're nice and quiet and uh, quite soft touch, actually. I thought it was going to be... Um, uh, yeah, the caps lock blue switch. So yeah, that's what they've got on the uh, on the mega, and it's brilliant. Shift lock and uh, caps lock both have them, and it just makes it feel like a a classic lock key, even though it's not locking. It feels like it is, and that's nice. I like that. It'd be nice if I could get the um, the light from underneath because when I press the caps lock on this keyboard, it lights up underneath. Uh, it'd be nice if I could get that to shine through the keycap somehow. I don't know if I could maybe drill a fine hole out of it and put a kind of little plug of uh, green kind of acrylic in there or something so it lights up green when I press it. But I don't really want to mess with the keycaps unless I've got some spare ones. But I'm pretty sure I could do it. I think if I just drilled out a tiny little hole in the corner and uh and and plug it with a, a green kind of acrylic plug it should should look all right i mean it would have to be measured exact so uh dual hole oh do you know what i've actually got green uv resin as well i've got green translucent uv resin i could do that in two minutes that'd be really really easy so drill a hole put it put it down flat and and uh, and kind of maybe tape underneath the hole or something like that um so so i can put it down and pour some resin in put it in my cure box um i just let it cure the cure the resin with the uv uh oh shit that would work really easy i might i'm gonna try that out i need to yeah i need to work out first of all where the light comes from if it will shine through i think it should because it lights up white underneath the keys, so I think it should work. Um, Killbox kills a whole key. Well, I, I'm just thinking about um, getting like a dropper and just dropping some green, green resin. Um, uh, dropping some green resin into the tiny hole that I've made, and then putting it in the cure box and letting the cure box actually set the resin. Rather than print it or anything, won't the light always be on? No, because my keyboard doesn't. My keyboard doesn't light up. You see, so only if I press the caps lock, let it lights up. You see, it lights up underneath the key. Yeah, it's a proper digression. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So, yeah, we've got the line in here. So now what we're going to do, we're going to uh, write a routine that when we draw the line, it's also going to calculate where each where the next one needs to go in. That's going to be quite easy because if we've got the original position, all we need to do is add 21 to the Y and add whatever is in DX to the X position. So it's that simple. And because we know the start position is always going to be this value here. The other sprites are pretty easy. So I'm, I'm going to add in uh, I'm going to add in six sprites here. Uh, they're all going to be the same, but I'm going to space them out 21 at a time. So uh, in the Y, so that means this would be uh, 69. <laughs> this would be 7E. This would be uh, 9, 3. This would be A, 8. This would be B, D. I think that's right. We'll soon see so if I set this to uh, 
should be a straight line down the screen there. Whoops. Actually, let me just offset it because if I if I just offset it slightly, it'll be enough just to note that the flat say the hex. Yeah, I, I'm a uh, I, I do. Yeah, I kind of I kind of think in hex when I'm programming. Uh, okay, why is it off by one? Do I need to draw an extra line down? Hang on, fifteen. Oh, maybe my line algorithm is not right here. If that was John, half would be hex, half would be decimal, and one would be Chinese. So it looks like I actually need to write to y plus one. So maybe it's because my comparison, yeah, so that's fine. Uh, so actually this should be 14. Uh, but what I think I need to do here uh, is if I exceed this value. So so this would be branch of carry loop but then also branch of equal loop and that will exit if it's more than. So there isn't a comparison that just does more than it's more than or equal to. So it's BCS. Um, so what you have to do is you have to first check, you have to do like do a double branch like this. So you do a branch that first checks if it's less than a value, then you do a check if it's equal. And then that means the, the non branch version. So the bit that gets to here is if it's more than that value. Uh, and this should be correct now because I don't want to, I don't want this to be the wrong number here. I want this to be the correct number. Um, interesting how it didn't go across by one. I probably need to do the same with the, uh, uh, with the al algorithm in the middle of the loop as well with a branch in the middle of the loop. So I'll do that in a minute. Uh, and honestly, it's not using that much. I know it is that there yeah, it's, it's rather frustrating. It's gone over by one right at the last minute. Um, and that's probably because this routine here is probably the same. This should probably be um, like that. Uh, let's let's give that a try. But you can see this is where this is where the um, the algorithm kind of breaks a little bit. Um, I mean, at the moment, it's just stacking all the lines vertically, so that's, that's kind of why it's like that. Uh, good night, Mythical Duck. Thanks for joining the stream. Uh, this will be different when um, when we actually set the Y positions for these these sprites as well. But at the moment, we're not we're not setting any Y positions. We're just we're just saying create the uh, uh, create the stack of sprites. We're going to do that as part of the draw line algorithm. Uh, what we'll probably do is have a draw line algorithm which calls the right version of draw line and stacks and and staggers the sprites properly. Okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, the line algorithm is not much different, so I'm, I'm I'm okay with that. I'm going to keep that. I think we need uh, one. Or, oh, it's in front as well. Why is it in front? Maybe I need to set sprite power on this because if I go up here, I'm behind. Okay, maybe I need to set sprite priority on on all sprites to be that. Okay, let me find that. So sprite priority is, I want to say D01B. I can't remember. Uh, It is D zero one B. Okay, so let's find that in here, and that's used in player for some reason. I only set it in player and nowhere else. Oh no, I set it here as well uh, in the multiplexer. Okay, why do I set it in the multiplexer? Oh, initialize enable. All right, I'm just going to turn it on like that. So hopefully now that will go behind that um, thing, uh, and that can be another another check that we we will do. Um, when we do the collision stuff. So what we'll need to do is we'll also need to almost trace the line or um, might be able to u utilize some kind of background collision or something. I'm not sure how we're going to do that yet. I need to think about a little bit about that, but I don't see any reason why it can't be done um, 
relatively simply. We've got we've got the stuff we need to do background collision checks you know, at a relatively quick uh, speed. Oh, because I'm setting everything. <laughs> stupid, stupid. Can you make the text ten times bigger? Are you talking to John there, or are you talking to me? I'm gonna make it one notch bigger, just in case you're talking to me. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of fancy fonts. Some of them are all right. Some of them are all right. Um, there, there's some fonts that, that that need to be a little bit fancier. Um, like if you're doing um, like a medieval RPG, you can't just use plain looking text. You need to kind of quite a fancy font for that. Um, so in those cases, you kind of do need to do it, or else it just looks weird. Um, okay, cool. That's going behind now. That's what I wanted. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't have the masking on it, but it's. I, I just wanted it to be behind. That's fine. Um, okay, I'm a little bit bothered about the algorithm here not showing a line going. Okay, let me set two as my... Also, I think we need another sprite here, so I'm going to call this a few times. Uh, seven sprites. I mean, that's probably more than we need. So, oh, actually, no, it's probably not. Well, let's have a look. Let's see how far it comes down. Sure, just use system. No, 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 no. You need a fancy one for that. But that's the only time I think it's acceptable to use a fancy font. If you're making a game that doesn't doesn't have a time period or theme that feels like you need to have a, a fancy font. It's hard to explain. Some games feel like they need it. They don't look right without it. Oh yeah, no, this is fine. Okay. So you can see these. this line is looks like it's wobbling. The reason is, is because this is each sprite and it would be moved across slightly on each one. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the value that is left in error uh, to decide how that, that line should be drawn. So, so we're going to have a draw line routine, and that's going to take these values and it's going to work out which one to draw. For now, we're just going to draw the draw line left and right. But when it's finished, we have a value... Um, in in error uh in this this thing here and we also have uh, a dx value so this is the uh hang on what's it actually compared to when it moves across so it's compared to uh, dy okay so now what I need to know, I'm going to take the value in dy and I'm going to half it. And now I'm going to compare this value to that value. If it's more than dy, sorry, if it's less than dy, we'll just go ahead to here. If it's less than dy, however, we're going to increment a value and that value is going to be stored uh, I'm just trying to work out. Let me just put increment here, right? Uh, and that is this value dx. Okay, yeah. So we're going to increment line dx. Right. And what that means is, for every sprite that goes down the screen, we need to we need to position the next sprite wherever the line finished, right? So if the line finishes right at the bottom here, then we just stick the next sprite underneath. If it finishes in the corner, we need to move the sprite over by up to 21. However, the line could be almost reaching um, the next line. So this is why we're going to use the error value. So the error value is the counter, the fractional value that works out whether or not we need to skip a line over when we're drawing the line. By halving the uh, dy value, we get the middle point of, of that. So we can have a look and we can say, has our fractional value 
should we round it up or should we round it down if we round it down we don't do anything if we need to round it up then we increment the the dx and instead of moving 21 across we move 22 across instead uh, and that way we, we should hopefully keep a fairly consistent uh, gradient there will be some tiny errors in it very very tiny errors but they when the line is moving quickly it shouldn't be it shouldn't be easy to spot in fact it'd be very difficult to spot i would imagine um Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I just caught up with what so Andy just sent me a question. Minus minus points to Andy. <laughs> oh, I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> minus MK points to Andy. <laughs> Many minus points. I see why you asked to have your eyes tested now. I didn't quite get what you were on about. So he was reading the code wrong. He'd missed the uh, he'd, he'd missed the hash. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So so by by checking the error value, we can work out if the if the offset of the new sprite should be rounded up or down. Uh, and that's what that's what this is doing here. Uh, we're just checking those offset. We can mess with these values because they're set immediately whenever we draw a line. So we, we draw a line, they're set. Um, the line line d uh, line dy and line dx don't change; they're just compared. So they they they're available for kind of work. And the line error is up, updated, so we can use these values uh, when we come out. So then all we have to do is uh, we take the sprite index. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store um, base index here. I'm going to call it base laser index. No, I shall call it base index. It really doesn't matter because it's part of this namespace, so it's fine. And that's the multiplexer value that's returned by this one. And the reason that's important is because we need to use that to update these values here. Um, so I'm going to load base index. And we're going to load the accumulator with uh, multiplexer data x pos uh, comma x yeah because we started the base one and we're going to load y which is going to be our msb like so there we go right now what we need to do is we need to do um, a loop through these things now. Uh, y comma x, yeah, that's fine. So we're going to have a loop here. I'm going to call it loop. So I'm, I'm try to use these just for skips now. So if I'm skipping over sections, I'll use this. Whereas if it's a loop, I'll I'll do this. Um, so the end result here is we'll increase x and we'll compare x to what is it seven? I think sprites so we have there. If it's not equal, we'll go back to loop. Uh, except it's not seven, it's going to be uh, base index plus seven. Okay, so I'm just going to put a limit here. I'm going to. And this is the last right. So it's be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need to increment that value from there. So whenever you call this method, it's going to return which multiplexer index it's, it's used. Uh, and so that means here we can compare this to base index. It's one. There we go. Oh, God, I haven't had a break here at all. I'm just, I'm just going to power through. Power through to the end. That's what I say. <clears throat> okay. So actually that load accumulator x and y should be there like that so now the accumulator contains um increase x actually that should that be oh yeah i can get rid of that there and we can get rid of Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. So we do the increase increase there. Now what we do is we uh, we have a value in the accumulator, 
and we have our um, value that we need to add here. So what we're going to do is we're going to Uh, line decks like that and we're going to store that at x post like that and now we're gonna uh if carry is still clear we're going to do nothing however if it's not we're going to increment y so this is going to make sure that our msb gets ad advanced uh, then we're going to transfer y to the accumulator because you can't do store y comma x really really stupid you can on the mega 65 they've added it in thank god uh now that cyberpunk 27 source code was hatched and i can fix the problem himself or dissect the game i wouldn't want to do that it's a mess it's a mess that game i can't imagine what the source code looks like i do you know what i'd like to do i'd like to i'd like to list all the to do's in that code imagine imagine that searching for to do <laughs> Uh, more to do's than lines of code somehow. <laughs> yeah, that that would be. Oh God, I kind of want to look at it. I, I I'm kind of curious because I I do wonder. First of all, is it the most up to date? You'd think it would be the most up to date. Um, because it sounds like they had access to cloud storage or something. So, um. I'm seeing there. Uh, all right. Uh, Toto, yeah. <laughs> Toto isn't Toto. That's right, it is, yeah. What is Toto again now? Is it uh, also, I think, isn't it? All, yeah, that's it. Toto. Oh, Tambien is also, isn't it? Tambien is also. Toto is all, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, as well. Can be also or as well, yeah. Uh, um, I say I, I've got fairly okay knowledge of Spanish. I say enough to enough to kind of ask for food and read menus and complain at the uh, at the desk in a hotel stuff like that but uh, not enough to have a conversation in it really okay so now uh we're storing that here and that would be msb uh, and that's kind of it so hopefully now sucky sucky too expensive <laughs> uh. That's the only phrase you need, isn't it? <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> so at the moment we're not using any double buffer in here. We're just immediately updating these values. But what what it will be is is a double buffer system instead. Okay, so it's not actually advancing down this list for some reason. Uh, and that's because I'm not actually incrementing the value here. Oh, no, I'm incrementing it here, though. Uh, so why is that not showing up? That's weird. Okay. I'm intrigued by why that's not showing sprites now. Let me set the value to low because it could be the msb thing so let me just set the the line to zero yeah but do you know what i found really confusing when i was in brazil um it, it put me off a lot because i was looking at menus and i was thinking okay i know most of the things that are on it but could I find certain things like chicken and stuff? Oh yeah, RTS, thank you. Um, yeah, there was there was certain things I just couldn't find on the menu because the word for chicken in in Portuguese is uh, frango, um, not polio. So I I didn't have a clue what it was. So it took me freaking ages to figure out that's what it was. There's just a few subtle differences uh, that were enough to really confuse me. So. 
Okay, it's still not drawing down here though. So it's doing how many sprites? It's doing two and then it's failing. I mean, it should not be failing at this point. But it's like it's set in. Chipsy. <laughs> The the problem I find with Brazil as well is because Brazil is such a large country as well. The um, it's it's like any country that's sufficiently large. They they don't really have a need to learn uh, foreign languages because they they have you know they have everything they uh, they need in in the one country. They 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 don't really need to kind of learn how to you know uh, listen to English TV. They've got their own you know they've got their tons and tons of their own things so it was really difficult because almost nobody spoke english even in rio it's kind of uh kind of confusing at times but it's fine i, I learned i learned enough okay so i'm loading i'm loading the the debugger up because this is going to be an easy way to uh to quickly quickly see what's going on with the sprites I can't remember how to actually turn the sprites on uh, for some reason. Okay, there we go. Okay. Do I not have joysticks? Did I disable the joysticks? I think I might have disabled joysticks here. Right. Yes, joysticks bought two. Uh, okay. I'm sitting this freaking keyboard. Oh, it's the keyboard. All right. Uh, good night, Jihaf. Like in the USA, they can't speak English. Yeah, it it shocked me though. I I'd not seen that. The only time I'd ever seen that was in uh, Spain when um, I used to go and visit my uh, my ex wife's uh, mother, and she lived in in a tiny, tiny little village on the outskirts of Spain that nobody had ever heard of. Um, and that was that was kind of bizarre because they didn't speak a word of English there as well. So that's how I learned the Spanish that I learned mostly. So you learned how to spell. <laughs> See, if you're going to put a U in colors, that's the place to put it because it will just annoy Andy so much. No, I wouldn't want to go to Brazil now. It's a re really nice place, though, I've got to say. Although it felt dangerous as hell. Really, really dangerous. I've never been so scared um, just walking around what's considered quite a busy tourist area. It just felt so dodgy as hell. Yeah, it is It is dangerous, yeah. Um. Jesus, yeah, I can imagine. It's you know it's bad when you see when you see the cops go down the street and you've got like the military cops as well with them and it's all it's all very, very kind of um high end kind of military kind of policing going on there. It's it's kind of scary. Yeah, police yeah, policia federal, yeah. Yeah, they have two, don't they? They have the they have the the normal police and they have the military police, but they always seem to be together, doing stuff. Uh, even like the most innocuous looking kind of things, there, there's like a massive police president at them. Yeah. Sure, in five seconds they would. Yeah. <laughs> So we were in, um, in, when we went to San Francisco, we were in, uh, we actually stayed in Oakland and we stayed in, uh, is it, I can't remember, is it Fruitvale or something it's called? Uh, yeah, Fruitvale. Um, and we were, we were just like walking from there to the, to the subway stations and, uh, or to the metro, whatever it's called in San Francisco, I forget the name of it. And then sometimes we'd walk down to the docks from there, and we'd do it like 
late at night. So we didn't realize how dangerous that freaking area is. It's apparently it's like really dangerous and we shouldn't have been doing it at all. <laughs> you just don't, you just don't realize. And we look like tourists as well. So yeah. But yeah, it's not as bad as the favelas. Um, Okay, why is it only drawing two sprites? That's what I don't understand. So we're setting the X positions. That's all we're setting. Let's try not setting the MSB and see what happens. Scunthorpe is the same. <laughs> Compton and LA. Yeah, I could, well, that's another place I wouldn't want to get lost saying that though when i when i stayed or took the kids to uh new york uh, a couple of years ago we stayed in queens uh and that was quite a bad place in queens where we were at as well uh but i i kind of researched before i went i researched it so i knew it wasn't a good place i knew it was a case of you 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 get you get ubers everywhere once it goes dark and you don't you know you, you double check the driver name and make sure he says your name and all that crap so um yeah there's some nice areas of Queens, but the area we stayed in was a shithole. Um, why is it only drawing two? I don't understand why it's only drawing two. Okay, right, let's 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 just exit this immediately and see what happens. Have I completely broken the? Maybe I've completely broken the line algorithm or something somewhere. <laughs> yeah it's in, it's crazy how much the stuff costs over there mind you it's it's not that much better in london to be honest i mean these these places i mean this flats is a tiny tiny flat but um it's because it's quite new it's worth quite a lot i mean you're looking at half a million at least for a place like this that's why i don't that's why i don't buy buy property here Waiting. Um, and that's half a million pounds as well. So that's going to be what seven, seven hundred, seven hundred, seven hundred fifty or something. Um, yeah. Well, we're we're kind of both. We're we're fairly close to Hampstead Heath, and we're close to a Tube Station as well. So, but this is like a a very small uh, two bedroom flat. So it's not it's not a big place at all. I mean, it's nice, but it's not. It's not big. Okay, and now it's drawing them all. So something in this this lot here is is changing. But all I'm doing is storing the exposition here. But if the line DX is zero, which it is for quite a large portion of, so if I make this zero, which it is, then the line DX should be zero at this point as well. And the line error should still be uh, zero as well. Okay. We closed two underground stations, <laughs> the Olympic Park and two parts. Jesus, your place must be a lot. <laughs> it's nice, but it's not big title of this next day. Oh, that's the best one I've heard. In a oh, God, I miss Brooklyn Nine-Nine. God damn it. That's it coming back. I don't know if there's been a new season out and I've just missed it. And hey, Thalamus. <laughs> Only ten episodes next season. Oh God. Okay, I'm, I'm really looking for. I love that show. It's so good. It's such a brilliant ensemble cast. I mean, everybody in it is just excellent. So, okay, what is going on here? Why is that line suddenly cutting off? Oh, and it will be the last season as well. Oh, man. That's a shame. 
such a good show as well. Such a good show. Ah, uh, God, why? So this here means that unless that value is non-zero, uh, which is not. In fact, let's let's have a look in the debugger again here. So uh, let's find out where that is. I want to get this solved before I finish, because we can get this working and the laser moving, even if it's not. Um... Oh God, why? <laughs> Uh, seems like C six twenty two studio is talking about sign and cos as cos. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, if you speak to N Durion, um, he's probably just made a mistake while he's been because he he did this the other day. So, um, just just uh, speak to N Durion. They'll uh, they'll put it in. So, halt is my spirit animal. <laughs> oh God. I'd like to think Jake would be my spirit animal, but it's really not. Everybody wants to be Jake, but it's probably probably more like Scully or something. <laughs> no, my look. <laughs> Scully or Boyle, I'd be one of those two. Unfortunately. Yeah, the Halloween heist. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, depends on the day Rose, Rose is good. I really, this is what I mean about the cast. Every single person in the cast is brilliant. Um, <laughs> one of these is a photo of a dumpster. One of these is your locker. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's going to be really badly missed that. Okay, uh, it's making my eyes while thinking about uh, how funny it is. Right, what what is going on differently here? Okay, I'm not. Am I moving X to anywhere else? No. Okay, am I changing? Ah, I am changing the accumulator here. This is the problem. Okay, so I can get around it. I just let me do a uh, push and a pull here. That's the problem. All right. <laughs> cool. Uh, and that hopefully now we should see uh, the line again. So I've been watching um, uh, Hot Ones, which is a YouTube series where some guy interviews a celebrity and eats 10 chicken wings and they get they range from like mild they eat them in order of hotness it starts off at like really mild and works up to like ridiculously hot towards the end um and it's, he had a uh, terry cruz on one of the episodes and it was so funny watching him <laughs> he was just screaming <laughs> hot ones it's brilliant i i definitely recommend it if you haven't if you haven't watched it uh definitely watch it it's a brilliant brilliant show yeah, that's worked. Perfect. Uh, okay, it seems to be missing one off the thing, though. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Okay. Uh, how many sprites? So we should have seven sprites, but only seeing increase X. Okay. Let's. Uh... Okay, let's run that in the debugger as well. in a few episodes yeah you should some of them are really really good um two thousand sprites at top oh okay oh no that's fine though that's that's fine that's absolutely fine that's just pointing to the same pointer same color different y values same x values that's absolutely fine thing with hot ones as well it's it's one of those shows that i'd not um i've only just discovered i can't believe i've only just discovered it because i've got like this treasure trove now of of episodes to go through okay so we get one two three four five six and then the seventh one is missing um it seems to be here for some reason
Um, so what happens if I just add one in there? Does that? So I'm just interested in in have I made a count up error wrong here somewhere? But with this in place now, it should be a fairly easy task to make these this this thing swing around. And then we just need to add on another stream in the future. But no, see, it's, it's stopping there for some reason. Okay, so I've added another one in. So what happens if I just get rid of this now again? So we're not going to line them up. It's just going to, I mean, they're already lined up anyway, but let's just see what, what it draws. No, okay. Is this am I hit no, I can't be hitting a multiplex because we've got multiplexer. We should not be hitting a limit here at all. Uh oh. You were right, it is duplicate values. It's it's these values here that were duplicated. Okay. Uh so I need to add twenty one to these, so that would be D two. In fact I only need do I need just one? I'll add two in just in case. This one would be E7. So it was Duke Values. You were right, Russell Mills. It just wasn't at the top. They were at the bottom. Oh, they you meant you meant at the top of the screen. Yeah, you meant that. AMK points for you. <laughs> I really need to get that set up, don't I? Start awarding you guys for for things that you spot. One thing that the the hot ones has made me want to do is get a bottle of the bomb, and and to see just how ridiculously hot it is. Okay, I wonder, now it's got a gap. Why has it got a gap here? What's going on there? Okay. Oh, it is drawing them there, but then it's moving it down the screen for some reason. I think that might be a multiplexer fail there. Something weird is going on. You see that sprite moving down the screen? So before it even gets to rendering it, it's moved it down the screen. So we've got some kind of multiplexer failure going on there. Um, okay, that's fine. I'll look at that on the next stream um, for now. So I think the next stream will be a bug fixing one. We're going to fix the uh, the decal bug with the, with the mace, fix the... Um, multiplexer bug that's going to be a fun one to find uh, but something definitely weird going on with it there uh, and then maybe we'll use the time to kind of optimize some of the routines a little bit um, and see what we can see if we can fix some stuff uh, to make it run as smoothly as possible Yeah, so for some reason that lasts. The moment it starts multiplexing, it kind of screws up a little bit. Uh, it's fine. I'm just going to leave it in for now, uh, and we'll we'll fix this out on a, on the, on another on the next stream because I've got like 25. Oh, maybe maybe I might have time. Let's uh, let's get the swaying of the the laser in first. Um, so at the moment this is only going to sway one way, so we're probably not going to have time because I need to do the other way as well. But let's let's get it. Let's get it actually moving first, and then once it's moving, we can we can test this side as well. Okay, so to do that, we're going to need um, a routine which is going to make sure that this moves as if it was moving in a circular motion, so in an arc, basically. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is going to be another table, uh, and it's going to be part of our update routine here. So we're going to we're going to grab these values and draw this line. So. Uh, we're always going to draw to the bottom here, but we need to change this value. So what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, call this laser arc. Now this is going to actually change depending on what. There's a few level, few screens with lasers in, so this will have to be adapted to 
um, to show the lasers in various uh, kind of positions and locations. So at the moment it's hard coded to this screen, uh, but we can update this to be more parameterized. Uh, so we'll have a laser rack index, which is gonna, just going to be our byte, which counts where we are uh, in the in the in the laser arc, and then we're going to have our laser arc, right? So our laser arc needs to kind of move, kind of following a sine wave pattern. Um, in fact, sine wave is exactly what we're going to use here. So I'm going to do it with. Hmm. I see. I don't want it to be too. I don't want the table to be too big, but I don't want it to be too slow either. Uh, so I'm going to use one to eight, and I'm going to stick it on a timer so it so it updates. But for now, we'll just do it. Uh, actually, no, let's do it two five six. Whatever. The memory is really not a concern at the moment. If it starts becoming a concern, then we can look back at these and say, "Ah, oh, is this a waste of bytes or not?" But I mean, at the moment, I've got so much room; it's ridiculous. Uh, hey, Slater USA, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing okay. Um, and what's up? Yeah, what's up? Uh, oh, and MPK, welcome to the stream. Uh, thank you for the follow. Christian Slater, welcome. Yeah, he's the only Slater in the USA. Is Christian Slater? Okay, so what we're going to do? We're going to we're going to use a sine wave. So if you imagine the sine wave uh, on its vertical, it's going to move like that, like that. So to one side, then to the other side. And that's exactly the kind of motion we need. We imagine squashing that down so it's just a dot. It's going to move there, slow down, move there. So it's kind of it's going to swing from side to side. So it's kind of it's perfect, right? So that's what we're going to use. We're going to use this, and we're going to. I wish there was a. a I need to make a macro to do this exact thing because I, I use this so much um, that I should make a macro for it. That that thing there. I type that so often. Um, okay. Uh, and then we need to multiply this by how far it needs to move. So it can move uh, 20 in each, 24 actually in each direction. Uh, so I'm going to set it to 23 because zero is on the, on the edge there. So that should be, should be correct now. Uh, now the problem is, is this is going to fail when this becomes minus. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to half it for now. So it only does one half of the size. So it's going to go that way. And it's going to bounce and go. It's just going to it's going to move out to the edge, move back, bounce. And it's just going to do that over and over again. Now it may be that the sway. Uh, no, it should be all right. I think because of, if you think of the way that a circle is drawn, um, the radius is the hypotenuse, right? So um, what we're setting is the is the x value here, and the x value is indeed calculated using sine. So you use sine for the x, you use cos for the y, or vice versa. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. It just depends on which way your your uh, coordinate space is set up. Um, so this should track as if the as if the uh, the the hypotenuse is the or the radius is tracking a circle. So hopefully this should be fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increment laser arc index. I'm going to get rid of this now. We don't need these. We know how long that line's taken to draw now. Uh, it's not the quickest line in the world, but it will do. Um, load X with laser arc index i'm going to load this with laser arc comma x and then we're going to transfer that into here now this is going to probably move relatively quick compared to what we need or maybe not that quick as i've halved it but um probably faster than we need it to so we'll, we'll take a look at it uh, but we'll do the other half as well in a second and, and deal with that um, when we get to it in a minute so uh okay so, pardon me. Uh, yeah, we're just going to run that now. We should get to see now whether our line algorithm looks fine with all the different gradients, all the different slopes that it's going to going to achieve. 
okay, it's not clearing. It's also not setting the X positions for some reason. Uh, so we need two things. We need, first of all, we need to clear before we draw the line. Um, so I'm going to have a clear line here. That clear line is is relatively simple. Uh, I could say. Uh, because this is just going to count backwards from 63. Uh, and store zero in those locations. God, why is it? It never manages to get the enter there for some reason. Okay, so that's going to solve that problem. So let's just make sure that that's working. Let's get rid of that while we're at it. Okay, and it's moving. Actually, that's not too bad. But now it's not staggering them out for whatever reason. I think I've broken that routine. Oh, because I did that. There we go. <laughs> Starting a new business, making yachts. Sales are good. Honestly, I think we need to pay somebody to write decent, decent jokes for it. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. So you can see there are some there are some slight issues with the staggering here is not quite correct. Um, so let's let's see if we can address that as it goes. But you can see how it's kind of it's kind of working, and this actually would wouldn't be too bad with uh with the other side done as well. But you can see how reusing the sprites kind of works. So, so there is some gaps in it. Uh, especially the extreme edges. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to try. I'm just going to see if doing this actually had a negative effect on it because I, I just kind of thought in my head as I was doing it that maybe I need to do so. Was this similar to how you do the jet set with the up it for ropes? Yeah, I'd imagine so, yeah. But you would use a slightly different algorithm so you get the curve on the rope as well. If it has a curve on the rope, I think it does in some of them, doesn't it? I can't remember which ones, but I'm sure I've seen a slight curve on the rope. But you can use the you can use the Bresnan line algorithm. Oh, there you go. That's, yeah, I mean, I I would say that's probably acceptable. Uh, but yeah, you can use Bresnan line algorithm to do any kind of curved. Um, curved line as well so it, you don't you don't have to do a straight line with it um you could just you can do a curved line as well by changing uh the the, the derivation slightly i think that's probably all right there is a little bit of a gap when it's at ex extremes but it's never going to go that far anyway that's much further than it's ever going to go it's going to go round about here i think um so okay let's let's get the other side of it working and then we if if we've got time, we should have enough time to do this, I think. Uh got about 15 minutes left. But yeah, I'm I'm quite pleased with that. I mean, obviously there's a multiplex error down here. Um it is a multiplex error, it's nothing to do with the, the sprite system. So I don't know why it's error though. I've definitely had the multiplexer doing its job, so uh 15 minutes not 50 uh, I, I that's when i finish i finish at half 12 in the uk here so um it's 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 like half past 12 at night and i've got work in the morning so i have to uh, i have to get my get my beauty sleep this doesn't come naturally you see it takes effort <laughs> it's really no effort at all <laughs> and it's not it's not beauty at all either <laughs> you're in san francisco okay cool we were just talking about san francisco 
um, a couple of us were. Hair doesn't grow on its own. In fact, there's probably this hair definitely doesn't grow on its own. This hair needs something, so this does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it does happen by well it doesn't happen by accident I work hard at making this work at making this uh, bad uh, no we were talking about I was talking about uh, where I stayed when I went to San Francisco I stayed in uh, Fruitvale and that was walking walking from, from the docks to Fruitvale at night and it was probably not the best idea The docks, yeah, where the ferry, where the ferry comes from in Oakland, fruit, fruit Vale in Oakland. So not San Fran. He was just over the water in Oakland. But obviously, we was there to to visit San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, there was a, yeah, there was also talk about that. All right, so let's duplicate this routine. So this is. This is going to be our draw line at right left. Now this routine is going to be almost the same, but I'm not going to um, I'm not going to incorporate it into the same routine because I want to make this as optimal as possible. Uh, memory is not that much of an issue because we're using cartridge. So hit me up if you need to. Oh, cool. Yeah, it would have been a lot better to stay in San Francisco than it was it was to stay where where we uh, where we stayed. But it was interesting. I mean, Oakland's Oakland's a relatively nice place anyway. So, okay. So now we need to go the other way. So what we need to do is we need uh, a slightly different algorithm here uh, because this algorithm now needs to be uh, the inverse of uh, of this value here. So because we because we're going the other way. So. Uh, is it 24 minus i no it'd be 20 yeah it is 23 minus i yeah okay that's x offset reverse which is this one here and then and then that isn't reverse powers of two this is just normal powers of two I think that's it. I think those are really the only changes. So maybe we could could maybe have done that here. Oh, no. The other thing I need to do now is I need to make sure that this value in, in here is is negated as well. So I'm going to transfer X to the accumulator. I'm going to ignore it with FF. i uh, going to clear the carry bit, add one, uh, and then store that in aligned DX. Uh, because we need to negate that value so that it's going the correct way. And now that value should should go the other way. So now if I change this routine uh, to draw line right left instead, uh, hopefully the line is going to be the top piece is going to look right. The rest is going to be broken, but the top should look correct. Uh, and we do. Times pi. Okay, just temporarily, just need to do this. Okay, so now it should be going the other way this time. Uh, it should be going backwards, but just the top piece because the the staggering is wrong. So. Oh yeah, that's it. Was it was a it was a joke because there was the spider with the gun, wasn't there? The crack spider, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Of course, it wasn't a real. I mean, there was part of me that kind of believed it. I think at the beginning when you first watch it, you could believe it being a real, real thing. But then it just got ridiculous. I remember now, yeah. But I do wonder if that's the sort of thing that somebody has tested at some point. Somebody must have done that. 
So again, we're just looking at the top one here, and that's moving correctly. Okay, but these these are obviously wrong, and the position is wrong. Okay, so we've got we've got eight minutes. So I'm going to finish this in eight minutes, no problem. So that's uh, this X position here, first of all, that needs to be changed. So we'll do that based on uh, this value here that we get. So let's first of all, let's make this the same uh, and use the whole thing this time. So now we've got the whole thing. Uh, we've got a value in the accumulator now, which tells us whether or not we're going backwards or forwards. So if this is, let's, let's make two things. Let's do pause. Okay, and let's do it done as well, so we know where we've where we've finished. Okay. So first of all, if that's negative, uh, then we go to neg. And the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to uh, first of all we're going to push that value onto the stack, and we're going to get it back later for when we do. Uh, this thing here, which I'm going to put in here. Oh, actually, let's do that. Hang on. Let's do it in here. It's probably better in here. Oh, man. Keep the update nice and simple and do the complicated stuff in here. So at this point, the accumulator still has that value that's in X. Uh, so I'm just going to go with that for now, which means this is fine. We're going to store that because we're going to restore that back again in a minute. If it is positive, um, then we're going to finish on that. And then this one, we can do that. So this is left, right, right, left. This bit here would change because this would become a subtract. Um, so actually, this whole thing would be different. So this is dependent on whether you're going left or right as well. So this is going to be this one here. But before we draw that line, and again, I think we still need to do this. So let's do one side first. Okay. So before we draw that line, we need to set all the, uh, well, actually, no, we just need to set the one X position of the first one. So that is load X base index, little accumulator F0. Let's store that at, uh, Multiplexer dot data Yep, yeah, okay. So probably don't need that there either. Okay. Uh, yep, that looks fine, fine, fine. Okay, so the only difference in this one is this is a bit of ABBA. I do like a bit of ABBA. And then this is, uh, oh, God damn it. I mean, this, I think this can be simplified uh, again. This is not much changing between these two, but I'm just going to keep them separate for, for speed's sake for now. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't want to think about that, but now I have. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh so in this case, we need to subtract 21 from this. Uh, so that becomes, uh, what is that? So D, oh, hang on, was it F0? Yeah, DB. Uh, 
and we just store that in the top one because they all get they all get staggered out depending on that then this needs to change because instead of going forwards this needs to go backwards right so um what we do is we set the carry bit and this time we subtract month <laughs> thanks for the resub andy appreciated month 53 17 months you got a while to go you're a third of the way there though or just just short of a third of the way there hopefully by then we'll have finished the saturday game you never know right I doubt it. Yeah, me too. To be honest, it's well. Uh, no, I think I think it's I think it is close enough. The end now. Finally. Uh, okay, so if the carry is still set, then we jump to here. Otherwise, we decrease y instead of um, yeah, do that. Compare x to. Okay, we do that for every sprite in the list. Okay, I think that is right. I think it is right. Um, we can just take a look, all right? Oh, God, yeah, I wish. Oh, I, I need to try this game on the Mega as well. I imagine it's probably going to have some issues. Oh, no, it breaks horribly on that side. Okay. Okay, so it's getting into the right piece of code, but it's obviously doing something incorrect. So let's have a look what we do here. Uh, okay, first of all, does that does that uh, line change position? Because it should, one of them should at least change position slightly. So. I'm going to fix this before I go to bed. I, I, I'm not going to leave it like this. Can't do it. Okay, so we'll look at the top piece here. No, okay, so it's not moving over. It's just jumping straight into this bottom part here. Uh, is it because... Ah, it's because that's been loaded in. That's why. Uh, okay. If I just load the Y first. So the value is never negative because the Y was being uh, registered first. So it's probably it's probably not a good idea to do that here. Um or or to or to actually do it. Uh, actually let's let's be let's be verbose about it. I think it's better to just waste a, a little cycle here. So Just so it's a bit more, uh, it's a bit easier to read. I don't want to split the the condition and the, um, the set and the condition over over two functions like that. It's just kind of methods like that. It's kind of crazy. So Saturday we're going to do uh, more mapping in the game. I think there was a couple of bugs I wanted to look at. I can't remember. I've got them written down somewhere. Um, but then we'll be doing Mega sixty five stuff at midnight again as well. Oh, okay. So it has. You see, I did move it over to the right side. You see how the position... I mean, okay, it needs moving a bit more over, but I think I've got some calculation wrong somewhere. Let's move that down to D9. Um, oh, yeah, of course it is, because it's not 21. It's Oh, hang on. Or did I add I took 21? I should have taken... 24 off so it should be d8 like that okay um actually no d9 i was right with d9 because in the, the pixel needs to overlap by one uh then it needs to set all these according to this position here so it gets the first one subtracts our line dx from it i don't know what line dx is going to be it's going to be backwards, isn't it? Hmm. 
no, because we we do this. Let's just check that. It's still not positioned right. Or maybe it was D8 then. I thought there would have been an overlap there, but apparently not. Okay, I can get rid of that now. I don't need that. Okay, so what's going on wrong here? Um, Compare X, increase X. Okay, that, this, this should be fine. I don't know why it's drawing them in weird places. Let's take a, let's uh, just compile it again. And then take a look in the, in the debugger. I, I, I want to fix this, but I don't want to spend too long on it because I do have some important meetings tomorrow. Um, it's going to be something simple. I know it's going to be something simple. Uh, so this is one of the great things with the debugging is exactly what's going on with these sprites. Uh, okay, you see they've been staggered over here for some reason. They're also not being drawn correctly. There, there's some kind of failure that's going on with the, the line drawing in there where it's just drawing the same line every frame, uh, which it wasn't doing until until what? What did I do actually? I didn't do, do anything that different from it. I moved that one over. Oh, I know what. I know what. Uh, it's because here, I don't transfer that to X. It's probably not. A, <laughs> thanks, thanks for that, Andy. <laughs> Plus AMK points for, for being correct. Just the one, though. I'm going to take it away from you from managing to do plus or minus listen. I mean, that's impressive. It's an impressive bot job. I don't even know how you would create that character. Hey, there we go. And cool, we've got a laser just moving across the screen. So the only problem is we've got some issues with the um, the multiplexer breaking down here for some reason. Um, I I couldn't tell you why it's breaking, but it is. Uh, and we don't have a color. In fact, let me just quickly put the color flashing because that's going to be pretty easy to do. Uh, so, oops. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this byte in here. And this is going to be the color that we display. And we'll do that whenever we do um, this bit here. So uh, so we're going to take uh, laser color uh, and store that at Uh, but then before we do anything with that, we're going to eor this with 0, 3 and store that. So the reason I'm eoring it with 0, 3 is because if it's 1, eoring it with 3 will make it 2. And if it's 2, eoring it with 0, 3 will make it 1. So it will toggle between those two values. Uh, another thing that's kind of handy to learn as well, just the um, the the, to the eor toggles like that are kind of, kind of useful. Uh, right, so we'll do that there, but then what we'll do is when we when we do the stagger uh, later on. So uh, this this routine definitely needs optimizing. There's there's lots of repetitive code in here which could be simplified. I think. Uh, oh, actually, we do an add up there, don't we? I'm not going to do it on that one. So 
That's instead what I'm going to do. Do it here. Copy that whole thing. I've been super lazy here. It just seemed easier than typing anything. <laughs> cool. Uh, so that laser will need slowing down. So the the draw line function will have a timer put into it. Um, if, if, let's just do that while we're here as well. Might as well. Uh, so. Yeah, this this whole block basically will have a timer, so we will load. Uh, I can't remember what the thing is called. Is it just called frame timer or something? I seem to change the name of it every time. Yeah, we'll use that one. There we go. Right, that's it. I gotta stop changing stuff now. We'll go and find someone to raid in a second. Let's turn everything off. Uh, who's on? Farrell's on. Hungry's on as well. Not raided Hungry for a while. Oh, I can see one of the sprites over here. Oh, it's the multiplexer issue down here. Okay. Uh, okay, I think it's actually changing too often, maybe. I might need slowing down on the on the pulse on here. Uh but we we've kind of got the we've got the idea now. It's it's in place. Uh, yeah, see this is this is just following an arc. So what we're doing is instead of giving it a number of degrees to move we're, we're telling it to move between these two points um on the x um, so it's just working out what the arc is between those two points it's like it's like getting getting a, a, a line drawing a horizontal line across the circle uh and deciding how long that line is so you can move the line up towards the up, up to the diameter of the circle basically or, or down to zero which is a, a single point at the bottom uh, so it allows us to move anywhere between those kind of any any arc along that along that circle, um, but because we're not drawing an arc, we're drawing a straight line across the bottom. Um, it gives that pendulum look to it, um, quite a slow one, but that's kind of what it should be. But yeah, that's that's kind of what what I'm after. I do need to slow this flash down; it's too quick. It needs to be more like this, uh, and then we need to do the collision stuff so it actually actually throws particles up when it hits things but yeah that's kind of exactly what i wanted to do it looks pretty good um i don't think it i mean you can see a few errors in it with the gaps and stuff but it's so minor um and the payoff for, for the speed boost you get by doing it like this is so much better um, it's pretty good yeah yeah this game probably does teach an epilepsy one i mean it's got it's got quite a lot of flashy bits in it some of the rooms are ridiculous uh, let's go and raid. Uh, let's go and raid Farrell. I like I like raiding Farrell. She's fun. Not sure what she's doing tonight. That looks distinctly. It looks kind of mega drivey. I'm not sure what it is though. Uh, let's let's go and find out. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming along tonight. We will um, pick up the Saturday game on Saturday obviously and then at midnight we'll switch over to the uh the Mega 65 and see what we can do on that. I've no idea what I'm going to be doing on that yet. It, it depends on a few factors but um yeah, we'll we'll pick that up and do something on that. All right, cool. Thanks guys. See you all on Thursday uh Saturday. Bye.